everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on episode 20 of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Whoa, we're down to like the last seven episodes. We still have seven episodes, which I, I'm glad. We're, we're getting in the home stretch, but we still have seven episodes. Lots of things can happen. That gives me hope that maybe Shinji won't be stuck in this Berserker Unit 01 for the next seven episodes. He could be, though. He could be. I don't know. I, it's so weird to think that there's 26 episodes in this season. I'm so used to 24. Even 25 sounds weird, but 26, it's like, ooh, all right. We've got, got two extra episodes than normal. Neon Genesis being extra as always. So Neon Genesis is the reason there's only 24 episodes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I do have some comments before we dive into episode uh, 20. Episode 19 just came out on Patreon and episode 18 on YouTube. I haven't gotten through all the YouTube comments for episode 18, um, and I haven't gotten through all the ones for episode 19 yet, so... I'm sure that those will carry on over in episode 21, but I couldn't wait. So um, I do want to note a, f a few things before we get into this. Um, Nicholas, Nicholas Bunt noted that Masato clutching her necklace back in episode, I guess it was episode 18, um, episode 18 or 19, uh, could be her realizing that she could possibly die like her father in that moment. I think it was episode 18, but I thought that was a really cool detail. Now I want to draw her like holding her cross necklace. I like it a lot. Um, Melania the Severed noted in episode 18 that uh, it answered, what type of man is Gendo? And, and their response was that episode 18 answers that question by saying that he's the kind of guy who smirks while everyone else is horrified. That makes perfect sense. Gendo is the one guy to smirk while everyone else is traumatized by the events of episode 18. That is the type of person that he is. And that ambivalence is a psychoanalysis term for someone who is holding simultaneous contract con contradictory feelings towards something. So it could relate to Shinji's reluctance to kill the angel because it was a possible person, but it could also tie to Shinji's relationship with his father. He wants to love his father, he wants praise from his father, but he also kind of hates him and resents him for leaving and abandoning him. So yeah, fun times. I'm not a fan of Gendo, if y'all didn't know. Um, Esteban! Esteban made note that, um, we don't know if Toji was able to see out of the Eva during the events of episode 18. If he was and he was conscious, then he literally saw Shinji's unit beat him to, to a pulp. I'm like, that is incredibly traumatizing. I like to think that even if he did see it, he doesn't remember it because when he wakes up in the hospital, he doesn't seem like he bears any ill will towards Shinji. He seems like he's okay with Shinji. He's wanting to know where he is. So I feel like if Toji, I feel like this show, if it had shown, if it had panned over when he saw Shinji, there would have been like a flashback to him, like getting punched from the Eva's perspective, maybe. And we would have seen that. But since we didn't, I like to think that even if he was seeing it, he blacked out and doesn't remember it. I'm going to hope. Um, someone in the comments said that Toji lost a leg. I didn't know that or notice it. I haven't gone back and looked because I was like, well, I guess we'll find that out maybe eventually, I guess. So I don't know. That was just brought up. Um, alongside the idea of the S2 engines, I have not mentioned them in the discussion because I haven't really noticed in the conversations we've had. There's something about them with the angels, but I honestly, I just kind of, I was like, it feels spoilery. So I just stopped reading and was like something about the S2 units and the engines and the angels. I'll figure it out eventually, I'm sure. But I just wanted to point those two things out so that if I don't seem surprised by them later, you'll know why. So, but there was that. And then, but thank you Esteban for that comment about Toji. That's terrifying. <laughs> so John Smith said that Kaji's garden has melons because of Masato, and I laughed really hard. It's such a basic joke, but I love it so much. I was like, ha ha, how fitting. It couldn't have been, couldn't have been strawberries. Mm -mm, had to be melons. I was like, that's good on you, John Smith. That, that's, those are the comments that make me smile. I love that a lot. Um, Jimmy Russell noted that the Eva recorder not functioning could be a sign that in episode 17 that maybe the angels were trying to communicate because it seems like the angels don't really respond or get into Shinji's brain if they are getting into his brain when he has that conversation with himself until the Eva's power down. So I was like, okay, that kind of would make sense that maybe the angels are trying to communicate because the Eva's powering down and not having that barrier anymore would allow the angels kind of infiltrate even further. So that was pretty cool. I like that. Uh, Alex Cornejo noted about how terrifying the dummy plugs really are. And episode 18 kind of demonstrates that completely and it ties to Gendo I feel 
because um, Alex's comment related to how kind of in our own world, you know, using drones for warfare, using technology that doesn't have any humanity attached to it, it seems in theory like it would be a good thing because, oh, you're not killing humans in war. But that's kind of the point, right? The point is that, and I talked about Alex in the comment, I was like, yeah, we've seen it other shows that I've watched that the point is that during war, when people, when humans fight humans, at some point they realize, usually, <laughs> that this is bad. Why are we doing this? And at some point, usually, people will sit down and talk afterwards and be like, can we stop killing each other and maybe find some type of resolution? Doesn't always work, doesn't always pan out, but it is, it eventually happens, right? Conflicts are resolved by humans. When you take that humanity out of it, then suddenly, you can just kill people and if you're not involved, you're removed and distant from it. There's no emotion. There's no emotion tied to it. So it could just keep on going. And maybe that works for Gendo because Gendo is like an emotionless man who doesn't seem to show any emotions towards anyone. Maybe for him that works out great. He's like, great, emotions are not involved anymore. And it's like, they need to be. So I thought that comment was really interesting. And I'm like, yeah, the dummy plugs are terrifying because it's it could be implemented into so many other things. If it works with the EVAs, who's to say it could be implemented into other aspects of their military system? And that's terrifying. If you don't have humanity, then what do you have? So I like that comment a lot, Alex. Thank you. And then also, um, it, this is a little bit of an Attack on Titan spoiler, just real quick, so I'm going to mention it. But Alex talked about, we talked about how Shinji and Eren from Attack on Titan are similar. But um, I liked Alex's, like, Alex's like, yeah, Shinji and Eren are similar. But really, Shinji is like an algamation of Eren's impotent rage, Zeke's daddy issues, and Reiner's PTSD. And I'm like, oh my God, he is. <laughs> it's literally Zeke's daddy issues, Reiner's PTSD, and Eren's rage all compiled into this one being that is Shinji. So maybe Isayama realized that making Eren entirely like Shinji was too much. So he's like, I'll give him a brother and then a guy that's exactly like him and we'll cover all of our bases. And I was like, that's great. And then, so end of Attack on Titan, spoiler. And then finally, uh, Bright Girl and Christopher Peterson kind of together talked about um, Kaji's advice to Shinji about women being on a distant shore. And Bright Girl pointed out that that may not be like the best advice to give Shinji because Shinji this entire series has really struggled with his with gender roles and how it relates to him because Shinji doesn't fit into the stereotypical masculine archetype. And so we've talked about how Shinji kind of gets assigned or takes up roles that are more feminine. And so he kind of struggles to like prove he's constantly being told to be a man and that's just not how he's functioning right now. And so the, I, the advice about the woman from a distant shore may not be the best for Shinji because all it's doing is just furthering some of those inadequacies that Shinji has faced the entire series based on his gender. And Christopher Peterson kind of added to that saying, wondering if Kaji, you know, is kind of speaking from experience and kind of speaking, you know, projecting himself in that being like, well, maybe Kaji can't communicate with women. Maybe they're on a distant shore to Kaji, but that may not be the exact same thing for Shinji. So, and it's sad because Kaji has been like the only positive male adult role model in his life and he's not perfect. None of these characters are perfect and that's kind of what's so great about them. They're all very fleshed out and human, but it just kind of goes to show you that even the positive adult male figure in Shinji's life doesn't have all the answers and doesn't perhaps have the best advice. So, so that's where we're at. I, I, that, that took less than 10 minutes. We're doing solid. <laughs> So I, I don't know what to expect with episode 20. I saw my brother the other day and I told him what episode I just watched and he gave me the biggest grimace I've ever seen in my life. And he was just like, okay. And I was like, <laughs> so I, he told me at one point I would text him and I have not had the need to text him about, he's like, at one point you'll end an episode and you'll text me and be like WTF. And I was like, and he knows me. He knows me. So he knows it'll take something big for me to get to that point. So, and I was like, I've not got to that point yet. And he's like, mm -hmm. So then that's all he said. So I was like, okay. But yeah, we won't waste any more time. I'm pretty excited for episode 20. Let's dive in, shall we? We're going to start episode 20 of Neon Genesis Evangelion. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's go. I don't even know where we start with this. Oh, what an episode. I, 
We, ooh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, we, we're getting into some trippy stuff. And this is one of those episodes that I'm like, oh, show, you're going to want me to pause like every second, aren't you? Like, like when they were, when Ritzko and, and Masada were driving away and they, there was the radio, there's something about mothers and sisters and they were talking. I didn't know who to listen to. And then there's stuff going on. That freaking Eva looking the most terrifying as possible. Like that was legitimately scary. And I have to rewatch that. What, what in these 20 minutes? We're getting into some, like, sci-fi mind-melding what's happening. We're getting answers, but uh, do I want the answers? Oh, no! I, mm, we are on the precipice, I feel, at the top of the plateau. And it's like, do you really want to know? Do you, I feel like this episode was your last chance out. <laughs> I feel like it's, it's Ano, it's Hideki Ano saying... Okay, look, I'm about to get into some trippy stuff. So if you want to peace out now, now's here's the warning of what we're about to get into. It's going to get freaky from here on in. If you want to peace out now, maybe you should. If you don't think you can handle it, maybe you should leave now. I'm like, I, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> what are we getting into? So yeah, we need to go through this. We need to go through this. Um, I really thought, I wasn't sure. I had thoughts in this episode of what I thought was going to go down and it did not turn out that way. In some, in some cases it was better. In some cases it was a lot worse. I was like, well, okay. So, oh my gosh, this like look into the psyche and what has man done? <laughs> what have we done? Oh my gosh. It's like, it, here's the thing. No, here's the thing. I said back in the three act structure, let's back up a minute. Way, way back around, it seems like a forever ago, way back around the time, and Huckleberry's at my feet, so I can't move whiteboard coon, but around the time of episode 13, around the time that we were nearing the end of, we were a third of the way through, right? Technically, episode 13 is the halfway point. So, so we said around episode 9, yeah, because 9 times 3, getting into that, 9 times... Again, not a math major. Eight times four. We're just going to go this way. So in your three-act structure, in your three-act structure, here's your thing. You have in Act 1, and I'll put it up here so that we have more space. In Act 1, you have your introduction. In Act 2, you have everything goes down, everything goes on, and then you have your resolution to the problem at the end. We've set up the problem. The problem in the series on the surface seems to be the angels and underneath the surface it's Shinji's relationship with his father. And so we've kind of set up within this little three act thing the, the concept here that Shinji and his dad have a very bad relationship with one another and so at the very start of the series it's Shinji becoming a pilot because the pilot will possibly give him a sense of purpose and possibly it's given other pilots a sense of purpose. And then as we go on, and then um, it will give him praise from his father, but also save the world from the angels. Act one set all that up. We got Asuka involved. I guess episode nine would have been the end of act one. So we got everybody introduced. Kaji was introduced. All of our characters are there. We've got our main objective. Everything's great. Act two has been getting the plot in gear and setting up all these different conflicts. So we have Kaji, we find out, is a double agent, possibly a triple agent. We find out that Masato and is being left out of the loop. We find out that Ritsuko is connected to the Ma Magi, which is connected to her mother. We find out there's stuff going on with Rei. We find out about Toji being the, the fourth child. We find out about these angels trying to infiltrate into Nerve and trying to get to the computer and getting to a mind to connect with something that's human. We find out about Adam in the basement. All, all this crazy stuff happens in Act 2. But way back when we were talking about the three-act structure, I said that usually Act 2 ends with your characters at their lowest point or at the point where things are about to take a big major shift into the resolution. I thought that episode 18 would be around the time we start Act 3. I think I was wrong. I think that episode 20 was the end of Act 2 because we had this callback to the episode at the halfway point. We had the callback 
to writing a weaving a story. We called back to it. I feel like episode 20 is the end of act two and we're going to have six episodes for the act three, which will be 21 through 26 is what I'm thinking. I think that we've just concluded act three Act two and set up some bad stuff is about to go down. Basically, we've set up that things are not what they have been appeared to be the entire time. Things are much worse. And that anything that is going to get resolved is going to get resolved in this third act starting with episode 21. Because now Shinji seems to have sort of identified maybe what the issue is. We'll talk about that in this episode. But yeah, I think I was wrong. I think episode 20 is the end of act two. And episode 21 is going to be the start of the final act. I'm not. I'm not. I'm excited, but I'm terrified. Because this thing is very animalistic. It's eating the angels, right? It's just eating the angels. Uh, and, like, just gobbling them up. And it's it's humanoid. So let's talk about the Evas. We're going to put the Evas in purple here. We're going to talk about the Evas. We're going to do it in the purple, kind of like the O1 unit, all right? And we're going to use... The, uh, the O1 unit as a base. We're going to say O1 unit is base. I'm not hip to the kids lingo, so <laughs> is it based? I don't know. Y'all made up these words. <laughs> so basically what we know about it is that when it is in berserk mode, when it is in berserk mode, it is very animalistic, animalistic and primal back to the basics. It also is cannibalistic cannibalistic towards the angels. Now we have established that the angels are trying to make contact with Adam and if they make contact with Adam then it's going to cause the third impact. So that's kind of a problem. That's why they've been keeping Adam at bay. Again, I have questions of the little specimen in the jar, was that the atom that we saw in the basement or was it a different atom? That's, we don't understand for sure because I'm like, if they, if it was a, if it was the same atom, where'd they get the LCL fluid before? But if it's the same atom, then why are there two? So again, I know we'll find answers, but it's just a matter of time. But God, that's so creepy that the Eva is just moving around like an animal and then it's lower, it's restraints are coming off. So there's that, that's a fun time losing its bind. So it has bindings. It has bindings that are designed to limit its power. But it has awakened and is shedding those. And it's some straight up nightmare fuel up in this business. Some straight up nightmare fuel. Mm-hmm. We can't stop the Eva. And Kaji's just sitting there like, well, isn't that something? Look at it. It's been awakened and set free. Isn't that cool? Seal won't stay quiet for this. So Kaji's like, we're going to, we're going to oust. He's like, the Seal is not going to stay quiet while this is going on. They're, they're going to set some things into motion. And maybe Kaji's plan is to strike the iron while it's hot and to get in while they can. I just love at this point that we see, we see the Seal the, the, the council committee, their logo is the Mask of Adam. Isn't that funny? It's like a rainbow, though. There, so their logo is the, the seven eyes. Only it's rainbow. And that's our old Simon Says committee. We'll put them up here. Okay, and they're connected to seal. Right? And then there's the line right down the middle. Okay. Alrighty. I do like that now we get a coordination between the rainbow color on the pattern that is also the Mask of Adam. And then we cut to the Simon Says Committee. I like the connection there. It's great. So this whole conversation, it, conversation in this episode happened very quickly. They were just, they were just chugging right along. I was like, whoa, Anna, we know you've got a lot of plot to go through, but can you slow down for two seconds? The EVA series aren't capable of generating S2 engines themselves. Okay, that's what the person in the comment was trying to get at. They just were telling me a few episodes too soon. I was going to figure it out in this episode. So go back to this, that the Evas cannot, so they cannot generate S2, whatever that means. I don't want to know. Don't spoil me. Engines 
themselves. Which is why they need it from the angels. Okay. And I know they said it was something that happened back in episode 5 and 14, but it went over my head. We never imagined it would take one into itself this way. So, by that, are they referring to Shinji or eating the angel? Because they essentially did both. They ate the angel, but then they also have Shinji absorbed inside of them, which we'll talk about that. Um, so, yeah. So, interesting. Okay. And so, they said this incident is at extreme odds with our script. All right. So, the SEAL, <laughs> so the seal committee, it's old, old SEAL here, they're basically saying that the O1 incident is at odds with the script, quote unquote. Wow, it's almost like what you told Gendo to not do, he totally did. <laughs> it's like, what did you expect? Oh my gosh. And so then they're like, it's not gonna be easy to correct this. Well, no, were we not mistaken to have entrusted Nerve to Gendo Ikari in the first place? <laughs> I'm like, well, were you mistaken to put this emotionless man who seems to have no, you know, will to live in charge of this giant massive death project i don't know maybe it was a bad idea <laughs> maybe you should put fuyu chan in charge but without that man we could not have executed all of our plans so it's kind of a parallel with gendo and the old simon says committee it's kind of a parallel to shinji's whole dilemma right it's the a man's battle 2.0 right because what they're saying is they're like gendo Gendo is a problem, but he has helped them. And that's kind of exactly like Shinji's ordeal in episode 19. It's exactly the same. Shinji was like, I don't, it's, it's the one thing where it's like, they, Shinji caused them a lot of problems in the last episode, but at the end of the day, they needed him to fight the angel. In this case scenario, Gendo's caused a lot of the problems, but in the end, they needed him to further their agenda. So it's sort of a damned if you do, damned if you don't, but it's both Shinji and Gendo kind of having the same um, effects. Right? So then they say, Ikari, what are you thinking? And I love this guy. It looks like Jordi LaForge. He's got like the, the, the big, the mirror over his eyes. And then, so they're having this discussion while Gendo is not there, which is actually interesting. It's like the first time we've seen the Simon Says Committee without Gendo there. It's like the first time they've all gathered that we've seen, and we've seen the communicating about Gendo. And meanwhile, Fuyu-chan's like, so I'm not getting a paid vacation right now, am I? <laughs> meanwhile, Fuyu's like, so that trip to overseas, I'm going to cancel that. And Gendo's like, yes, it all begins here. So they've been planning this for quite some time. This has all been in the works for quite a while. This whole thing with Gendo and Shinji and Rei. We'll talk about this, okay? So I'm going to put Gendo over here. Gendo and the Evas. We're going to make a little extension of the Evas right here. So this has all been, it's planned the berserk mode, right? The berserk slash, I'm gonna put awakened because that seems to be what they, they are referring it to that it is an awakened Eva. So we're gonna put that right there and say that this was all planned. Gendo's been working on this for years. Form of the mind, form of the man. I like weaving a story to oral stage. Electric boogaloo. <laughs> NGE weaving a story to electric boogaloo. That's what we're gonna call this. But yeah, form of the mind, form of the man. Interesting. So I'm going to put that actually at the top here because we're going to, I want to save this whole bit for Shinji, to be honest. So form of the mind, form of the man. So whatever your mindset is, that is going to determine what kind of person you are. If you have a good mindset, then it'll influence you one way. If you have a bad mindset, it'll influence you another way, aka weaving a story to the oral stage. And I know I my mind is in the gutter and I'm thinking of that sex scene between the two of them at the very end that they did not show us but let us hear all about it. And so 
<laughs> I, I there's there's that. But also, when I think of oral stage, I think of oral tradition. I think of you know the the talk about primal animalistic back before there was a writing system people would communicate stories through oral tradition and they would pass stories down by word of mouth over and over again and if they didn't have a form to write it and preserve it then they could tell stories and then pass over and over again and and that's a way of preserving a culture but at the same time the more you pass that story on the more it changes right it changes over time so there's another series I'm watching right now where things kind of where you find out, you know, there's a legend that occurs because people just pass these stories on over time and they kind of get some of them get exaggerated or fabricated and it just alters and becomes a legend. Right. So that's interesting. I, I like the titles of this episode. So the first day, let, let's talk about the first day. Let's talk about what happens during the, the days, the days here. Right. So basically, this is a month. I really thought that we were going to get like a very biblical seven days. And when we got to the fourth day, I'm like, okay, we're doing seven days. And then they skip. I'm like, why? Because Anna was like, well, that's two on the nose. <laughs> it's like, and plus it wasn't realistic because if, the, if all this happened within the span of a week, that's a lot of things to happen. I'm like, I know nerve is efficient, but are they that efficient? So anyway, so we have day one. All right. Day one. What happens on the first day? Everybody panics is what happens. So damage on both Eva units is beyond the hay flick limit. The hay flick limit. So there's a hay flick limit. All right. I'm sure somebody in physics will know what that means. The hay flick limits, uh, O, O and O2 are beyond whatever that limit is. Basically what's saying is they are out of commission. Again, I want to make note, Asuka's Eva has blue blood. It has purple blood. And I really don't think that that's a color decision to make it stand out. They could have made the blood darker if they wanted to, but it's, it's purple blood instead of red. That still strikes me as odd. I don't know what to make of it. It just strikes me as, it just strikes me as being weird. So I don't know what to make of that. But anyway, so basically, uh, Ray and Asuka are of no use right now. That's one thing. I want to make note, in the span of 31 days, there is no angel attack. None. So let's be clear. In 31 days total, there is no angel attack um funny that because there was like an angel attack every five minutes up until now so what okay i'm just gonna file it away i'm just gonna lock it away for now that there's been no angel attacks during this entire month of business nothing's happened now nothing's happened while shinji's been out of commission just gonna point that, just gonna file it away, no big deal. I feel like I should put a tinfoil hat on because this episode makes me wanna have like a giant conspiracy theory and be like, what the fudge? But then we see, we saw Ray's Eva, the OO unit, and it is just like cut, its head's cut in half and it has red blood, so it is different. I, it's baffling. It'll take time before everything goes back to normal, ha ha ha. And then we see the pyramid and stuff has a big hole gashed through it. And then, fortunately, the Magi system can be transferred. So, okay. So, there was this part here about the Magi system. So, they are going to transport. We're going to put transport the Magi. That was the next thing that was brought up. They're going to transport the Magi. Okay. And so, this place will have to be scrapped. It'll just be a matter of time before the brass decides to abandon it. So they're basically saying they're going to have to move Nerve. They're going to have to move Nerve HQ um, somewhere else because they're like, the top brass is not going to want them to stick around in a place that is not functional. They're going to need to pack up and move. And so then Maya is like, that's true. For the time being, we'll have to use the backup secondary control center. So there is a backup. So there's a backup control center. Cool. All right. So... They have a backup, a backup center, and it says no Magi, because Amaya's like, oh, well, even without the Magi, we can go sit up there, and 
Akagi's like, yeah, that's right. We really don't have much of a choice. We'll dust it off and be working again by this time tomorrow. Or by this afternoon. Ak Akagi's like, we ain't wasting time. We're gonna go work now. I like that Maya has her little cat pillow, like her little seat cushion. And um, uh, Zeke's boy voice actor has all the books. And she's like, um, Maya's like, but these chairs are hard and the sensors haven't been broken in. It's difficult to work here. And she's like, the layout's the same as the control room we're familiar with. Akagi's like, put your cushion down, buckle down. We'll just have to work with it. We don't have much of a choice. We've got to start things now. She's like, just doesn't feel right. And Akagi's like, at least we can use it. Like whether it feels right or not is superfluous. At least it's someplace that is functional, which is few and far between. What we don't know is whether we can still use the O1 unit. Ugh. Huck like woke up. I like, yeah, Huck woke up right as, as it transitions to this monstrosity with human teeth and what looks like a face. And I'm sorry, but the fudge. I, so Ray, let's make a note of Ray. Ray just wants the O unit to be usable. She does not at any point mention Shinji. She just wants to make sure the O unit is functional. And so we have these bandages around this face. I'm going to take some pictures against my better judgment. But these bandages have like little zero zeros and like procedures and shit like that. Mm -mm. Nope. I, I'm, I don't like this. I, if I were Masato and the guy with the glasses, I'd run. I'd <laughs> be like, I don't want to see this anymore. It's so freaky. So it has... Like its arms and stuff are detached and it, the unit is, it's all broken open there. It, there's a body there and it looks like there is an eye. There's an eye that is green, but there's also another eye. It looks like that is not, and it's got a mouth and it's got that core, that, that engine, that core is, is visible but it's got all these bloody bandages around it. And they're saying it's restrained by a cage. Are you sure it's safe? So we had the O O1 unit is restrained. For now. I, what the hell is this? It looks like a nightmare. No internal thermal, electron, electromagnetic, or chemical energy readings are being detected. So it just seems like it's dead inside. Mm-mm. Nope. I, I don't like this. And it has like a head. Nah. The S2 engine is completely inactive. So the engine's inactive within it. Okay. So it seems like it's dead. Nevertheless, under those conditions, Unit 1 has moved on three separate occasions. Okay. So there have been, so we talk about the S2 unit, S2 engine is inactive. So they mentioned that there were three times that, that the O2, the O1 unit moved regardless of being shut off and having no functionality. There have been three times, three times that that's happened, right? And Masato's like, yeah, it's happened three times. It happened the first time when the hand came out to protect Shinji, happened that time. It happened in episode uh, 16 when Shinji bust through the angel, the black and white angel, and it happened this last time. So it's happened three magical times. Yeah, you can't treat it carelessly based on what we can see and measure. So yeah, she's like, yeah, we can't trust this thing. Just because it's telling us that it can't move, we've got to restrain it because it's moved on its own before when Shinji was inside of it or near it. So he's inside of it now. So we can't trust it just being on its own. Mm -mm. I, nope. We don't know what it'll do if we meddle with it careless, carelessly. And see, it's interesting that they call, Masato and the guy with the glasses call the Eva unit it when Ritsko said she. So again, it's given, it's a, Akagi gave it the pronoun she, which will tie back to that. There were some images here that I couldn't exactly see. And he says, just like you, Mitz Katsuragi. Yeah, it's very unpredictable, just like you are. And she's like, mm, thanks for comparing me. That's the freakiest shit. What the fudge? I don't like its green eye at all. I don't like its green eye. I don't like it's just staring there. It looks terrifying. 
it that is nightmare fuel that is pure nightmare fuel nope <laughs> why why would you do this to us why would you do this to the show oh my god and so okay so getting back in this he says i'm sorry yeah, so the guy with the glasses is like, oh, he, he tries to make a joke with Masato and she's just not having it because Shinji is still trapped inside of it. We don't know that yet, but he is. And so th we go back to the Simon Says Committee who say our l concerns are not limited to the O-1 unit. It's not just the unit that we're worried about. They go on to say there's been serious damage sustained by units O-2 and O-0. -O. So headquarters was partially destroyed. Central Dogma was exposed. Everything went to hell in a handbasket. The damages are enormous. We can't estimate how much money and time we've lost. They're not talking about the pilot. <laughs> they don't give a shit about Shinji. There's, there's a human pilot that's stuck inside one of these EVA units. We don't have to worry about him, but the money and time we lost. It's like, oh my God, these guys. They, they don't care. There is no, there is no care to the human and we're going to talk about this with shinji in a bit but there's no care to the human inside the eva unit all they care about is the damages and the materialistic things that they will now have to spend time and money on never mind the person that could be dead whatevs that's what we mentioned first right and so then at that point this is all because we didn't put a bell around akari's neck which now I just picture Gendo with like a little cat bell around him at all times and Fuyu-chan just taking his finger and ringing it. That's, that's my vision of it. But they basically say that the whole reason for their problems is because Gendo was not monitored. They're like, we let Gendo go do whatever he wanted. We didn't put a bell around his neck and now we're paying the price. He had too much authority, too much power. And they're like, oh, there was a bell. It just didn't ring. We had him monitored. It just, and I wonder if Kaji's the bell. I wonder if they're suggesting that Kaji was the bell. He was supposed to be the one to rat him out and he didn't do it. Ah, is Kaji the bell? That might be the thing too, that Kaji, Kaji is trying to be, Kaji's trying to put too many irons in the fire. He is trying to double cross Gendo by getting information from him and Fuyu-chan to give to Masato and also the Japanese government. But he also wants to stay close enough to Gendo to get information, but he's not telling it back to the Japanese government because Gendo would be suspicious of him and probably figure it out. So Kaji's just between a rock and a hard place, essentially. And poor Gendo, or not poor Gendo, poor Masato, does, I don't think she knows how deep Kaji's in on this. I don't know. But yeah, Kaji was the bell, it just didn't ring. And then a bell that doesn't ring serves no purpose. So I'm worried about Kaji. I am at this point. By the end of this episode, I'm worried about Kaji. I'm a bit worried about Masato. I don't, we'll talk about the end of the episode when we get to it. But this line here, a bell that doesn't ring serves no purpose. I'm like, they've kept Kaji around because he was going to find out information and get back to them and the government has he gotten back to them? So th that's problematic. I feel like they're contemplating getting rid, of Ka getting rid of Kaji. We have the bell take action next time. Okay, so maybe they're gonna move Kaji in position to do something. Okay. And then we go, yes, we go right to Kaji. My, my, what an unexpected turn of events. Yes, Kaji is the bell. He's the bell around Ikari's neck. That's why he can't leave. He's stuck there until he fulfills his mission, damn it. Uh, oh, Kaji, my boy. Mm, what an unexpected, unexpected turn of events. And there they are. Damn it. Okay, Kaji. But Gendo and Fuyu know that you know them. So it's like, and you know they know. So it's just, uh, it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well. Death flags are there for Kaji. I, oh, oh, oh. Oh, I don't like this at all. I don't like it at all. I'm getting nervous for Kaji. And I like that in the room now, I like Kaji's leaning up against the desk like like a Playboy model. He's like, hey, how you doing? And he's like, the committee. I mean, how do you intend to explain this to Seal? Like, he almost gives himself away on purpose, right? Just to, just to seem clever. It's like, Kaji. So he asked Gendo, how does he plan to explain this? I love that everything's pink. 
Again, we've tied back to Kaji having kind of like a more femme fatale gender role in this series, that he's the one sent in to infiltrate, and he kind of like is the smoozer and the charmer. It matches the pink interior. It's interesting. But the walls and the ceiling and the outskirts are purple, like the Eva units. So that's interesting. And Gendo, Gendo is like, I, the O1 unit fell down some stairs. <laughs> like, that's essentially Gendo's answer. He's like, oh, it fell down some stairs. It wasn't under our control, right? He says, it was an accident. This was an unexpected accident. Therefore, O1 will stay frozen until the committee gives us further orders. So they're going to keep it restrained. And he's like, well, that's a very appropriate decision. That's a good way to cover your base, to say that it was just an unfortunate accident. We couldn't have predicted the angel would do this. But I like that Kaji says, however, your son is still trapped inside it, isn't he? We don't see Gendo's response. I Oh, that pisses me off. Yeah, Kaji has to be the one to say, hey, isn't your kid still trapped inside that Eva unit? So then we go Eva 1 entry plug eject command. Balthazar, direct, connect, direct connection number 0102, which equals 3. Eva 01 plug unit system link 2, which equals 3. So it's like, ah, everything's going back to the number 3 in this. Refuse. So Balthazar tried to open up the entry plug. Nope, not happening. As expected, it's not working. The code to eject the entry plug is not being accepted. And Akagi is like, well, damn, what about the backup and the dummy signals? They're being refused. We can't open a direct circuit either. And so they're trying to just do an emergency. We've connected the plug to the video's monitor and switching the main monitor and Masato in the middle and seeing that there's nobody there. There's nothing there. This episode, by the way, the animation on this episode is really interesting. It's really good. It's not necessarily the cleanest episode. It's not necessarily, but there's little things. Like like this scene here with Masato, she's in the bet the the empty chair, the empty pilot's chair is in the fore is in the background, but it's the one that has focus. And everyone in the foreground, Masato and Maya and Akagi and them are all blurry. And it kind of reminds me of like Ralph Bakshi or something. It reminds me of like just the art style. It looks like something like that you'd see out of the 70s Lord of the Rings movie or something that Ralph Bakshi drew. It just looks very different. And there's a scene with Akagi later, like when, Mas when Masato drives off in her car, that's done the same way. The art style in this episode is very unique and it's different. I like it, but it's noticeable. I was like, some of these art choices have not been made in this series and it's interesting. So we're still on day one, right? We're still on day one, right? And so we realize that um, Shinji is no longer in his physical form. No big deal. <laughs> Just like, like the fudge. Like, wait, what? And Masato's like, what the hell is this? Masato's like, where's Shinji? The pilot. I love that in the corner it's just flashing, pilot vanished. It's like, shit, what? The interior direct direct connection, 3116. Is that like, is that John 316? Oh my God, is that is that direct connection number 316? Is that connected to John 316? Like, I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'll fear no evil. Is that is that what we're getting into? I, oh my God. This is the truth behind the 400% sync rate. So four hundred apparently when you reach a 400% sync rate with your Eva, you really synchronize with them. Like like mind, body, and soul, right? That where what in the world happened to Shinji? Because there's his suit. His suit's just just empty. He's been taken into the Eva one unit. And she's like, I like that Masato is the audience surrogate at this point being like, what does that mean? What is an Eva? So that is, okay, so Shinji has been taken into the Eva unit. At that point, Masato asks, what is an Eva? We need to know these things. We've, we've gone 20 episodes and... Akagi is as cryptic as ever. It is some, an Eva is created, 
created by man in his image. Cryptic as we can be. Now, you could get kind of biblical with that and say that, well, Eve is created from the rib of Adam. So technically, Eve is created from Adam and is kind of created based off of his image. There's just obvious changes. So you could kind of go with that if you wanted to do that, if you want to tie that. But also, it's the idea that it is a man-made creation. It's something man has made that is, is the Eva man's taboo is this something that maybe we should not have made maybe we shouldn't have done this is this is this something here so yeah so this is something man-made and masato is just like well and apagi's like i can't really describe it any other way because it's too horrifying i'm sure because i i'm getting some bad vibes <laughs> I'm getting some bad vibes. I may not want to know how this Eva's made and what exactly it is. I'm getting some bad vibes. Mm -hmm. And like, I really can't describe it any other way. And, and Masato's like created by man. What, what the fudge does that mean? Like, didn't you just copy what you found at the South Pole? Ah, so Masato thought, Masato, she thought that the Eva's were copies of the angel at the South Pole, which we believe is Adam, right? Which, again, a rib from Adam is made into Eva. So, yeah, so again, we're, we're tying back to that same notion. She's like, well, wasn't this just a copy of the angel? Weren't the Evas just based off of the original? Because we speculated this back a few episodes ago, and so now Masao is kind of pseudo-confirming it, saying... Weren't these just copies of the angels? Wasn't that what all this was? I thought that's what it was. And she seems pretty skeptical. And Akagi's like, this is not just a copy. It's imbued with a human will. So imbued. Imbued with a human will. I have theories. I think that the human will that this O1 unit is imbued with is Yui's. I think it's Shinji's mom's will that's inside of it. I could be wrong, but I, that leaves the question of what the OO unit is. But you didn't have to start with OO. You could have started with the O1 unit, backtracked to OO, and then went to O2. You don't necessarily have to go in chronological order that way. And so... Masato's like, are you saying somebody willed this to happen as well? I love that this is sass of Masato in this. She's like, I like, like, excuse me. Like, I want some actual answers, not just your like gurgle gobble. Like, did you say somebody willed this to happen too? Like, like, did somebody and then Akagi's like, well, it could be the Evas. And Masato's like, I'm done. <laughs> just give me some damn straightforward answers, you winch. Like, Masato, she's just had enough. Because she's like, okay, well then some, did somebody will the Eva to absorb Shinji? And, and Akagi's like, well, maybe. And she's just like, <laughs> like, just no. And everybody there is like, like they know exactly what Masala is. She's like, do something, damn you. You created it, didn't you? Take responsibility for it. So yes, Masato, our girl, Masato gets pissed. And says, take responsibility for what you started. Again, I won't spoil anything, but that, that whole thing of taking responsibility for your for your creation um, kind of ties to Attack on Titan. We could talk about it in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, take responsibility for it. And Akagi is just like, The second day. That was day one. That was all in one day. Day one. That was day one. So day two. Day one, everything's just gone to hell in a handbasket. Masato's like, why can't you do anything? And Akagi's like, it's complicated. So, okay. There is a radio thing here playing as Ray is asleep in the hospital. So Ray, Ray is in the hospital with her injuries. I want to make note that the eye that you see for Ray is the eye that is revealed on the Eva unit, on Shinji's Eva unit. 
Just pointing that out. I'm sure it bears no, no consequence whatsoever. So it says, off the islands, these islands, the government has officially announced there is no federal involvement. Okay. In other news, it's been a month since the terrorist attack in Tokyo, too. Okay. So they're tying back the news and everything. So it said there's been a month. That's a day two, though. So for a second, I wondered if we went forward in time, but it said day two. So Ray is in the same room that Shinji has been in. Okay. All right. So there's that. And the government's passed news legislation to prevent another terrorist attack. Okay. And Ray says, I'm still alive. Okay. That seems like such a weird thing for her to say. Because, you know, right now she's not really said anything along those lines. But her saying, I'm still alive, means like, okay, I survived the attack. And then we just cut straight to the other apartment, which is Masato's. And Asuka. And Asuka's like, I got that she made it, okay? And so Asuka is not handling this well at all. Asuka's like broken a cup. She's tore a magazine up. She's like, damn it, Masato, don't keep calling me over every little thing. She's tore a pillow in half. She's like scraped across it. There's a big F. Oh, there's a big F that's been ripped out of the magazine. And then we just see Asuka's room and it's just, she's broken a mirror. She smashed something. She's ripped pages. She's just tore up everything. So Asuka is upset that she couldn't do more. That she couldn't do more. And then she says something about Shinji, but yeah, Asuka's just mad that she couldn't help out Shinji. She's like, to think I couldn't do anything. I can't believe I lost to that stupid Shinji. That she couldn't do anything and that Shinji, that Shinji had to play the hero. That's what she's mad about. She's not mad. She's, you know, in Asuka's own way of projecting, she puts on this front, but she's just mad because she couldn't help Shinji. She couldn't do anything. That it had to be Shinji that came in to save the day from the angel. That it had to be him. She's just mad that she couldn't live up to her own expectations because Asuka's whole thing this whole series is she's wanted to be the hero to be the one to save others and in the end Shinji has to come and save her and she's mad because she put her friend in danger damn that's really hard to see she's like I hate this it's really hard to see so that that's all that we get on the second day that that's it we just get Ray and Asuka's we get we get day, day one is damage control and the situation and what's what's happening. Day two is Asuka and Ray and what's going on with them. Then we get to day three. Again, this episode is all about the numbers three. And we get, oh, a plan to salvage Shinji. This thing is creepy. This whole this whole core that seems to have two bulbs around it and a big bulb in the middle. It's like at the heart of it. It almost looks like a living being itself. I don't like it. But yeah, so they get the plan to salvage, I'm going to put this in quotation marks, salvage Shinji. Okay. That, that, that which can be called Shinji's life still exists. Isn't that just the weirdest phrase? That which can be called Shinji's life? That's disturbing. And so Masato, I'm sure, is like, wait, what? Uh, I, yeah, for the record, still the creepiest thing ever. It just, it's look, and it's looking at them. That's the thing. It is restrained. This Eva is restrained, but it's creepy green eye that followed Shinji around from the, that looked at him from inside the mirror of the skyscraper next to him in episode two. The, the eye was following Masato and now it's following Akagi. It's just looking at them and it's, I don't know, but my aunt had a painting in her house. It was like American Gothic was the painting. And American Gothic is one of those paintings where if you're in the room with it, wherever you go, the eye, there, it's an optical illusion. But the way that it's painted, the eyes of the characters will follow you in the room. As a kid, it freaked me out. My aunt had it hanging in her bedroom and I was like, why? And I could never go into that room as a kid because it, it freaked me out so much. This is just like it and I don't like it. <laughs> so 
I like that Masato's like, and Masato is in the darkness. You can barely see the outline of her. She's in total darkness, and Maya and Akagi are the ones silhouetted by the Eva. And Maya's like, oh, so now you're respecting human life. Wow. We can't afford to lose Shinji right now. And she's like, well, I wonder. She's like, is isn't what Nerve isn't what Nerve wants not Shinji's life, but O1 as its tool? Mm -hmm. So Masato, Masato calls out and says that Nerve, Nerve only wants Shinji to use O1's unit. She's like, they don't care about him as a person. They just want him because he can pilot this Eva unit. And Akagi is like, well, I won't deny it. It's like, oh, God. We can surmise that Shinji's body has lost its ego border. And Masato's like, you're going to have to break this down. He's floating in the entry plug in quantum form. So he's right now in um, quantum form. Quantum form in the entry plug. And, and here's the thing that's kind of freaky about it. Is that Masato's like, well, what the hell does that mean? In other words, Shinji has shifted into a form we can't see. And she says, yes, the composition of the LCL inside the plug has chemically altered. So the LCL, which we know comes from Adam, that is from Adam and only Adam that we know of, has altered. I'll get the rest of this exactly how she said it because I was like, wait, what? has altered him into something very similar to the seawater of primitive earth. I beg your pardon. Has altered him chemically, chemically to ancient seawater. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, you've been sticking these pilots for the last how many months in this junk? that could have the ability to chemically alter them. It's like they planned for this to happen. They wanted this to happen. So it's like, did they plan for the absorption since the beginning, since the start? Because what if you knew this, this liquid had the ability to chemically break down someone and absorb it into its system, you've been testing them in it. You've been doing all these things, you wanted that thing to absorb them, but now that you can't control it, it's a problem, right? Now, now you need to backtrack and you can't backtrack. A soup of life. Yeah, so let's say, yeah, soup of life. He's basically like devolved down into like, into this microbial form, right? All the substances which compose Shinji are still preserved in the plug. So essentially his soul is in the plug. So they're like, oh, his soul is in the entry plug. And I'm sure we can't see Masato's face in this scene, but she's probably like, wow. Oh, okay. In fact, his self-image is pseudo-substantiating his plug suit. In other words, salvaging him means reconstructing his body and anchoring his psyche within it. That sounds easy. Sounds totally like something we do on just a Friday afternoon. I... <sighs> I'm just baffled by the science of this. That Akagi can say this with a straight face like it's nothing. Like, don't worry. We've got this. We just hit this. The fact that his suit is still there means that there's a chance we can somehow anchor his soul within the LCL fluid and just reconstruct his body. It's not like anything we've tried with the EVA units has failed this entire series. I'm sure doing this incredibly complicated pseudoscience or whatever it is will be totally flawless. I, but what choice do they have, right? And so I was like, is that possible? That seems like something you made up. I feel like you made that up. And they're like, with the Magi support, theoretically. So apparently the Magi is tied to the LCL and reconstruction. Okay. Sure. We'll go with it. <laughs> we'll go with it. And so you can't know what will happen until you try it. They're like, well, might as well try. We, What's the worst that could happen? So that, that's day three. Now we go to day four. So day three, we have the salvage Shinji idea. And day four. 
Uh, and you know what's kind of creepy? The When it first brought up the end of the pilot chair where the pilot usually has their feet, you know what that image looks like? It looks like the angel from episode 18 and 19. It looks like the angel from episode 19. It looks like that one. It looks like its face. It's kind of creepy. And he's like, what is this? Where am I? In the entry plug? In the 01 unit? But nobody's here. I'm not even here. So on the fourth day, Shinji awakes. And I'm sure there's some kind of biblical reference to something that happened on the fourth day. I'm trying to think back through, you know, on the first day. On the seventh day, there was rest. And so that's why I thought we were going to get to the seventh day and, and Shinji was going to maybe get rescued somehow. But that didn't end up happening. He's like, nobody's here. I'm not here. So then he's like, what is this? What is this? What is this? Again, things are repeated in forms of three, right? So I'm going to, nobody cares about Gendo. I'm going to put uh, over here things that are in uh, forms of three. So forms of three at this part, there is, what is this? All right. And, it, and they're at the ocean, right? They're at the ocean again. I, I could make an Attack on Titan reference that at some point in that series, the ocean plays a part. So I wonder if it's connected to this. And everything gets like really trippy around the ocean and the beach. I don't really understand. And honestly, the beach is tied to... So there's the image of... We're going to go through all the imagery in here. There is a shore. All right, that's the first thing that we see. And the shore can mean lots of things. It can mean freedom. But when I think of shore in this context, I think of life and death. Like if in another series I'm reading, there's the far shore, which is like the afterlife. And, you know, crossing that shoreline is a way of transitioning from one life into the next. So I wonder if this is like a reference to that. That could be. And so we see, he says, these people. And we see Masato and Asuka and, and Ida. So then we have uh, these people, these people that Shinji recognizes, all right, and all of them, it's basically all the people we know, and it goes through all the memories that we've had so far throughout the series of all of them together, and then we even, even Fuyu-chan makes his memories, that's great, but then he sees Toji and Ida, yes, they're people I know, people who know me. Okay, and Akagi. And then we have Kaji. We're basically going through the OP. Everybody that's in the OP. And we see Ida back when they suspected Toji of being the pilot. And Masato and Maya. And the guy that plays, that's voiced by Zeke. And then, there, and then Akagi again. And then we see Ray in his arms with the bandage. And Fuyu-chan looking sad. And Asuka looking angry. Lots of pictures of Asuka looking angry. And Masato and them, Dance Dance Revolution. Toji back when he was about to pilot the O3 unit. Oh, interesting. What was that one image? There's one image of... There's one image that's kind of odd. And there's Kaji. There's an image of a person with a dark eye. It looked like it could have been Masato. Could have been Masato, but maybe not. Most of these images, though... Yeah, could have been Masato, but maybe not. And Toji... And then pulling Toji out from the wreckage. And the, the picture of them pulling Toji out looks pixelated. So that's interesting. And Asuka looking sad. And then Shinji in the hospital. And Shinji at the station leaving. And then Shinji's picture on the report. He's like, this is part of my world. So he talks about seeing like, kind of like his life flashing before his eyes, right? That's what this whole scene seems like. It seems like his life flashing before his eyes. And so then we have, and I like that the animation kind of gets to like, it, it goes through the train scene with him talking to himself, but then there's, there's sketchiness of Shinji, right? The, the art direction it does that with Gendo too later on, but Shinji almost looks like a caricature or a sketch. It shows different forms of him drawn in different ways. And it shows him on the phone in the hospital bed, fighting the angel, doubting himself, talking to his inner self. And then we see the blue water. We see like the blue water above him, like he's seeing the water, like he's floating beneath it. This is supposed to be my world, but I don't really understand. So he does not, does not understand his world. 
which is relatable. Like, there's a lot of parts of our world that we don't get. We don't understand what the point is. Right? And so from there, is it an image from outside? So he's underwater. I want to make note that there's a big part of this that he's underwater. All right? And, like, he's in a... Is he in a test tube? Is he underwater? What's the deal? An image from outside. An unpleasant image. So he talks about something being unpleasant. Okay. And then that's right, the enemy. And so that's funny. That's funny that we tied the unpleasantness to the enemy. And we see the little red light. like, And it's a red dot, which I'm assuming is the S2 engine. Okay. All right. So that's interesting because the first Eva, the first angel, not Eva, the first angel we saw in episode one came out of the water. And this is like underwater and you see the, you see the red dot of the S2 engine. And so, ooh, I want to go back and see what that is. And we see the tendrils of the one and then we see the Eva unit and we see the angel that's split in half. Okay. And then we see their names. And he says, enemy, enemy, enemy. And we see all the different ones they spaced. So that, that's repeated four times. So we'll take enemy times four in that one. And we see the Eva. We see him strangling Toji's Eva. Okay. And we see all the different Eva forms. Like throughout the series so far, right? And their teeth and everything. The angels given the names of heavenly beings. So there is an acknowledgement that the angels with heavenly names. And kind of the irony of that, that, that they're supposed to be angels. They're named after heavenly beings. They're supposed to be, you know, ethereal and good. And they're named for, and they're, these monsters are named after it. Interesting. And it's all the different angels, right? Ooh. And I don't think there's anything... There's all the different forms of it, but I don't think there's anything that's too weird in there yet, right? There is like a red dot. We see the eye like bleeding the orange. We see the entry plug being stuck. We see Toji's Eva walking through. And he said the object, what does he say here? He says they are the, the, they are the targets of the Evas and Nerve. Okay. So this, this part is interesting. He says the target of Eva's and Nerve. Okay. But then this line here that he says there as he's fighting the other angels and he looks back on himself. The object for revenge for Miss Masato's father. So the object of revenge for... Masato's father. Now Masato has said that her that she was getting revenge on the Evas for her father, but I don't. Does Shinji know that the that Masato's father wanted revenge on the angels? Does Shinji know that? Is Masato involved in the creation of these Evas? I'm wondering that too. It the Masato's in the OP quite a lot. And Masato and Shinji seem connected. So I'm like, did Masato's father use some of, like, maybe Masato's DNA in some of these angel units? I feel like the angel units are, like, a nasty conglomeration of, like, angel DNA from Adam and a human's DNA. And so could it be that, like, Masato unwillingly, like, had part of her, like, from her father put into these Eva units? I don't know. I don't think so because it seems like they started the Eva project after the second impact, after, like around 2004 or around 2000 when Shinji was born was when they started it. Okay, and we'll go into that. We'll touch base on that here soon. But, because um, I have some thoughts about that, but I wonder if Masato is connected to the Evas at all and she just doesn't realize it yet because that's an odd line for Shinji to think about. That's just an odd line for Shinji to think about as he's, we see the fishbowl head. Mm -hmm. Why do I fight despite all I've been put through? So then there's that question. Why fight after all my troubles? 
I mean, there's lots of answers to that question. There's a lot of reasons Shinji could still fight, but he questions that, right? And so then, and then that's when we go to Asuka, and Asuka gives the advice. She's like, what are you, stupid? And so we see, again, the image of the angels. I want to see if there's any, like, some of it's repeated, some of it is not. So she says, what are you, stupid? And we see, look through here. We see the, the pyramid. We see, um, okay, what is, we see the different angels. I want to see if there's anything, if there's something weird there. We do see the angels. Oh, okay. Ew. What is this? There's a hand. There's like part of a finger. It looks like fingers coming out of something. What? Like it looks like fingers coming out of a shell. Um, what? <laughs> it looks like a hand, like something's coming out of a hand and it's creepy. Ew. It says strange beings are attacking us. And then we see like Toji, the head of his Eva before it was blown up. So strange beings are attacking us. And then there's the one that was like above the sky. And yep, and we saw it. We saw like the head of that one being crushed. And then we see the eye. What was that one thing in the, I'm trying to like get piece by piece all of this. There was something in like a test tube or it looked like underwater. I wanted to see what it was. Okay, oh, it was like, it was like the Eva units, like the things, it looks like a body of one being, like, being, uh, regenerated. Creepy. Okay, and then there's like a little drawing of, like the drawing of the angel, like it's a drawing instead of the actual animation. Oh, God, and then there's the spider, but it has like all these different shapes and stuff on it. What the fudge? If you're going through a fire, you've got to brush away the embers, of course. So, yeah. So, basically, go back to it. The idea that if we're going to fight, if you're going, if you're, if the, you got to go through a fire, you got to brush away what caused it, right? So, she's like, Asuka tells him it's because the enemy is a threat. Like, so we've got, we've got to fight because the enemy is there. We've got to, you can't just, if you're going through a fire, you got to brush away the embers. Like, you just got to deal with it. You got to go through it, right? Which sounds like a very Asuka thing to do. And I like that it's tied to fire, right? And then we see the angel's faces and we see Adam in the little, in the little egg. We see the, the water bear one. And we keep coming back to him, like strangling Toji, which is terrifying. And so then he says, Maybe I don't need a reason. Mm. So Shinji questions, Shinji, do I need a reason? Do I need a reason to fight? Do I have to have a reason to do it? I love that the images of him with the sky above him. Maybe I'm not supposed to think about it. Ah, so do I need a reason? Am I not supposed to think about it? Am I just supposed to accept that it's going to inevitably happen and that I just have to do it? So, interesting. We see the angel again. And then we see enemy times four again. Okay. Oh, and it's just some of the things are creepy about it. And it just keeps zooming in on the angels. Okay, they're all my enemies. And we see Tokyo 3. So that this whole thing that says they're all my enemies. And we see Tokyo 3. Now the question is, is that Shinji thinking that or is that the Eva thinking that? Is that the Eva being like, they're all my enemies. The city, all of nerve, they're my enemies. That could be the Eva unit. It could also be Shinji being like, am I supposed not, am I just not supposed to think about fighting? But if that's the case, if I'm just a tool for Tokyo 3 to use, does that mean Tokyo 3 is a threat to me? If they're just going to use me, does that make them my enemy? Uh, yeah, it's those that threaten me, us. They are the enemy. See, that's what changes it a little bit. That's what changes it. Because he says, those that threaten 
me, us, are the enemy. That makes things a lot more broader because that not only applies to angels, that means if Gendo threatens him or Gendo threatens Ray and Asuka and his friends, that makes Gendo an enemy. It, we still are looking at Tokyo 3 in the image, so if, if Nerve threatens Shinji and threatens his friends, then they're the enemy. It kind of ties back to the last episode where Shinji was mad at Nerve because he's like, you made me hurt my friend. You were a, a, a threat to us. So you were the enemy. It's like, getting, it's getting interesting. That's right. What's wrong with protecting my life, our lives? You can, you can, you can flip that two ways, right? He says, what is wrong? What is wrong with protecting myself and my friends? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. So, um, real quick, obligatory Attack on Titan spoilers. But yeah, th that's the whole Aaron argument in, in season four. He's like, what's wrong with protecting my life and my friend's lives? I mean, in Aaron's case, it's more his friend's life than his own. But that, that's kind of the argument. It connects to Shinji in that Aaron's like, yeah, so what if you all get killed? My friends are more important. Like, to Aaron... His close gathering of friends and people he cares about are more important than the rest of the world. He's willing to sacrifice the rest of the world to save the, the few. And so in Shinji's case here, he's like, what's wrong with me protecting my friends and myself? What's wrong with me choosing not to fight this angel because I know that my friends inside of it will be killed? What's wrong with that? He's like, screw you all. So it, it's kind of a, a parallel, a connection to Aaron in that moment that's interesting now this is all shinji subconscious like going through the motions but that connection is there and so i'm like i wonder if isiyama was like hmm <laughs> so end of attack on titan spoiler end of that but yeah and we see him going up to fight the angel but it's a two-way street he could be he could be talking about what's wrong with protecting myself and my friends he could be saying what's wrong with fighting the angels and doing what nerf wants but he could also be saying what's wrong with me not fighting the angels if my friends are at stake what, why do I have to choose? Why can't I protect my own life? Why do I have to sacrifice myself? Like, why can't I make a choice that protects me and my friends? And then we see Gendo looking at it. If you pause it just at the right point, it's Gendo looking at him with his glasses. Oh, it's so creepy. And Gendo, and then we see, see, here's the thing. We see enemy, enemy times four has been repeated twice. And now we're on it for the third time and upon this time Gendo starts to appear alongside the angels I'm like oh hell yeah here we go Gendo gets in on this enemy 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 I'm like when Shinji wakes up I don't know if Gendo you're the one that needs to talk to him okay and we see these different moments of him like with his shades blacked out we see him like looking out looking away i want to see if we see anything new we see him looking ahead we see him doing the pose we see him when he was trying to open up the entry plug we see him with the blood on him we see him like smiling looking towards ray we see him with the pose him looking down on, and then we see him looking down on shinji god and that image of him just like looking down at shinji with the blue figure and everything's kind of blurred he doesn't look exactly like gendo something looks wrong with him but he's just this imposing figure towering above him. And he's like, damn, damn, damn. So things times three. Damn. And Shinji's mad at him. He's like, how dare you hurt Toji and kill my mother? Like here he's not trying to defend him. Here he's straight up saying you killed my mother. Like how dare you? Oh... And he's like, father. And it shows, and it shows him with the blade as the Eva lunging towards Gendo, but then Ray pops up. So it shows Shinji lunging towards Ray, lunging towards Gendo with the knife. But then Ray appears. 
in his place. Okay. And so I don't know at this point if Ray, we'll talk about Ray and her relationship with Shinji. At this point, if she is supposed to be maybe like a, a moral grounding for Shinji to keep him from going berserk, if she's going to end up, and I don't know if that's her, if that's the purpose of her existence, but if by the end of the series, because Shinji at this point is really, really mad at Gendo. He's very mad. He's like, you you hurt my friend Toji. You killed my mother. You've, you've been a terrible dad. Like, I don't like you. You are, you are the enemy, you know? And so I feel like, I feel like in that sense, maybe Rey, whether she's been intended to be that all along or not, is she going to be like the buffer to keep him from going berserk? She, because she pops up in that moment, right? She appears and we see him like on the escalator with her going down like it cuts to that scene of them together and i want to make note that the one escalator is going super fast super fast but the escalator they are on descending is going very slow so that that contrast is noticeable it's like something's not right right and he says why do you hate your father and he's like of course anyone would she didn't she didn't say she she asked she's like why do you hate and he goes of course anyone would that's not the answer to the question Right? So that's a weird way of answering it. So Ray says, Ray says, why do you hate? She said your father, right? Yeah, your father. For a second, I, I, I'm going to talk about, I thought she said our father for a second. I'm going to talk about that. Why do you hate your father? And here's the savage response. Anyone would. Getting those awful. But we're going to tie back to this. He says, of course, anyone would. And she says, you can't understand your father. Why do you hate you can't understand? So I feel like we're going to talk about that question here in a moment when we get the flashback of Yui and Gendo and baby Shinji. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Because she asks, why do you hate your father? You can't understand your father. And that those two questions have been asked for several episodes now of Shinji not being able to understand why he hates him and why he can't understand him, that's going to come back here in a minute. And he's like, of course not. I've hardly ever seen him. And so Shinji says that I can't understand because I haven't seen him. Hasn't seen him. And he makes a pretty valid point here. He's like, I've hardly seen him. And he cuts to... Is that why you hate him? He's like, yes, my father doesn't need me. My father deserted me. Okay. So she's like, do you not hate him because you haven't seen him? And he's like, yes, I was deserted and discarded. You know, because humans want to feel like they're needed. And they want to be with someone. And he not only didn't need him, but he deserted him. And that's that that lingering hand shot of him being like, he's just trying to hold, he's trying to find the words and hold back, but also connect to that one thing. And it's that idea of like that, like just wanting to hold someone's hand too. And Gendo's hand wasn't there. Right? And then we cut to the bag that he's holding. And he's just left on the side of the road with his little shoes on his shirt half undone. Like, what do you expect? And he says, am I, and am I, Ray says, and am I the substitute? So Ray says, Ray asks if she is the substitute to need Shinji and to be with Shinji. Not necessarily, not to be Shinji's dad. I don't think Ray's asking that at all. Although it is quite on the nose that Ray asks the question, am I the substitute? in front of Yui's grave being shown to us. Like, am I the substitute for your mom? For something of that nature? And he says, that's right. That's got to be it. Because he's left. He abandoned me because he had you. Oh! She says, am I the substitute for you? Not the substitute for Gendo or for his love, but for Shinji. He says, Shinji says... That Gendo left me for you, for Ray. Ah! But then, th then we see tiny little Ray. 
little baby Ray. Like with her little her little dress and everything. She looks like a little baby Ray. Okay. She says, as if you didn't run away all by yourself. So, this, so there's some scenes here, okay? There are some scenes in, on the road here. Of, of It's on the road too. It's in the same place Shinji was abandoned, okay? So in the place, I'm going to run out of room. But in the place where Shinji was abandoned, there was also a young Ray. And she says that Shinji ran away. Like little baby Ray. Little baby Ray there. So was Ray there? What, what we've seen of Shinji has always been that same image of him with the shirt unbuttoned close to the side with the briefcase. It's always been him. Is the other side, and we've always seen Gendo walking away. Did Gendo walk away with baby Ray? Were there twins? Are Ray and Shinji twins? Are they nine months apart? Did he have Shinji and then have Ray? Is Ray a clone? But I'm ba baby Ray. I got to get a picture of baby Ray. Sweet baby Ray. So there's some images here though too. Because we saw, we saw he says, shut up, shut up, shut up. And it cuts on the thing that says mother. So he says, shut up three times. Let me get on this here. He says, shut up three times. We have the word mother. As he's saying, shut up. Okay. And so I want to get, I want to get all these words because it's, it's like, why, why do they make these words go so fast? Okay. I want to get this just right. That's the problem with this is that it's like, it, it's timing this just ever so. Oh my God. There's too many words. Why do they do this? Can I slow this down? I wish I could slow it. Oh, hold on. Got to go back. Let's go back to this again. <laughs> I'm going to try to go. So, something about Ray. Let me get on this. Ray Ayanami. Okay. I'm going to have to flip whiteboard coon over because I've run surprising no one out of room. Okay. So, we're back to day four. So, we're going we're gonna to go back to day four. Uh, continued. So, he sees baby. He sees baby Ray. Or child Ray, rather. And so then we get these words on the screen. We see Ray Ayanami. All right, we see that. Okay, and then we get this this big giant like blip of words. And I actually stopped the camera. My camera stopped an accident, and it's probably for the better because at that point I was like, okay, wait. I was trying to get back to the point where we're like when it transitions from child Ray over to all these words. There's so many words going so fast at once. Like my head was starting to hurt because he keeps saying over and over again to shut up, right? He says it three times over and over again. And so we get a multitude of words that I believe all attach to Shinji in this moment. And I want to get to like a point where it can maybe stop and just be like, what the fudge? But we get, let me see if I can get a little bit. I think I'm at about the end of it. Okay. Um, uh, give that, did I get that word internalization? Yep. Okay. So here's all the words that I could find. I'm sure somebody's done a Tumblr post where they found all the words in episode 20. I'd go look it up, but I don't want to be spoiled. So here's the words that I found in the last 10 minutes, clicking through this over and over again, trying to break it down cell by cell. But there's obviously Rei Ayanami, Yui Kari, Gendo Akari, mother, father, child. But then we have words that I think encompass Shinji in a whole. We have stranger how he can feel the people, inferiority complex, where Shinji doesn't think he's good enough to do anything, um, the ego that he has, like how he feels about himself, his self, mind and body. We also have hypocrisy, like the, you know, the hypocrisy of saying you're not going to become an Eva pilot, but then going back, um, his will, solitude, which, you know, Shinji starts out by saying he really likes that, his ideals, Reality, symbiosis, mind and body, which is happening inside this Eva unit right now. The obsession that he has to get praise from his father and from others. The repression, his values. Breasts were thrown in there, but he's a guy, he's a teenage boy, so he's, you know, having sexual maturity at this time. Um, internalization, the weak, how he can view himself when he's, you know, in his darker places. Insecurity, identification, 
needs, dependence, compensation for what he's gotten, fear, escape, loss, and then inculcation, which I was like, inculcation, I've heard that word before, but what does it mean? Inculcation means uh, to teach and impress by frequent repetitions or admonitions. So basically, you know, by repetitive, it's like Pavlov, very repetitive motions of being praised. So yeah, all that shit gets thrown at us in like a matter of 10 seconds. It's like, oh my God, show. Basically describing everything inside of Shinji's head at this moment. Everything of him being like all the reasons why he ran away. And then the little child Ray says, if you didn't run away all by yourself, like you have all these internal parts to you, right? He tells him to shut up, but it all twists around. And then we see, and then oral stage was in there too. There was like a little thing that said oral stage. So there's that. And then that whole thing about dependence. And then we see Gendo's face. Above all others, we see Gendo. So we've had the enemy times four, three times. We've had damn. We've had what is this? Shut up. And image wise, we have seen Gendo. And the angels presented as enemies to Shinji. And seeing him, and seeing these, seeing these different like versions of Gendo, seeing him like hand drawn versus animated versus like a sketch. And then the line, it's all his fault. Saying that it's all Gendo's fault. And it may very well be. It may very well be to an extent, right? And then just going through the hairs. But there's other images I wanted to stop here. And I like that we even, they even put in, they even put in the cell of Gendo, like with all the advice on how to draw him. They even included that in there, which I think is actually pretty clever. They included the frame, the actual cell work. It's great. And so then it just keeps coming back to him. And so that time I was going to tell him I hate him. So we cut back to episode one where Shinji was going and Masato was like, why are you here? And Shinji is basically saying that in episode one, I'm going to put my times three here, that in episode one, Shinji wanted to tell Gendo that he hated him. He wanted to travel all that way to tell him that he hated him and what a terrible person was. And in the very end, and it makes sense that the sign was there when he ripped up the letter and everything and taped it back together to compose himself. Yeah, like that anger and stuff was there from the start, right? And then we cut to him actually getting to that point in front of the Eva and he couldn't tell his father. And he's like, are you telling me to get into that thing and put myself in danger, father? And he said, it's correct. And he's like, what's with that? I don't want to. Why are you saying this now? I thought you didn't need me. And he's like, but now I do. And I merely called you because I needed you. So in that moment, Gendo, he only, so Shinji wanted to say that he hated him because Gendo is just use, using Shinji. He doesn't love Shinji, or at least it's not vocalized. He just wants to use him. And that's why Shinji wanted to tell him that he hated him because he's like, what kind of father just wants to use their kids and doesn't have any compassion for them? And that's when he says, why me? And you just, God, going back to episode one and seeing that visual, seeing Shinji and those monitors and seeing Gendo looking at him. Oh my God. And then Gendo's like, because it's impossible for anyone else. But that's impossible and he says, I've never seen or heard of it. There's no way I could do it. But then we cut to what Shinji actually was thinking of in episode one. And he's like, no, I knew. Shinji's like, I knew the Eva. So this is the part I wanted to get to. He's like, I knew the Eva. Okay. I wanted to get back to this. Because when we go back here to episode one, Shinji made that commentary. So Shinji's kind of an unreliable narrator, which is hilarious and ridiculous. That In the 20th episode, we find out that Shinji 
maybe is not a reliable narrator because that kind of alters your impression a little bit from episode one because episode one you were like man i feel bad for shinji he didn't know what the heck this thing was but shinji says no i knew what it was it's like what so shinji is maybe a little bit of an unreliable narrator putting you in but he knew the eva from his past and that goes back to that line from Gendo saying, we forget to survive, but there's some things we must never forget. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. That we, we get to this point and I wanted to see it because we got some images of the past. Yes, we got some images of the past. All right. So there is, oh my God, show me these things, show. There's in inside of Nerve, there is, oh my God, that's right. I knew the Eva. They're all in lab coats and there is a woman. I'm wondering if she's a Kagi's mom. She has the brown curly hair. There's Fuyu-chan and there's Gendo doing his famous pose even, even back all those years ago. So we see Shinji with Gendo you and Akagi's mom. I'm assuming that's Akagi's mom because her hair is curly and it does not look like a uh, Yui. Oh my God. And they're all in lab coats. And he's like, and that time I ran away. Oh, away from mother and father. Oh, okay. And so he, at at nerve he ran from both of his parents now the question is why did was shinji inadvertently responsible for his mom's death and just doesn't realize it yet i uh, he says he ran from both of them and we're only we're only now at weaving a story the we're only halfway through at this point oh my god Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> this episode. Oh my God. So yeah. So, so that, that, okay. <laughs> so that's, he ran away from his parents. We see that Shinji was around nerve when the Evas were originally there. We don't see Yui in that moment with Gendo and them. The fudge. We're slowly getting lore, but it's just like a slow drip. What the hell? And now we cut to the 13th day. And from here, we'll go to the 31st day. So, or no, it's the 30th day. It's the 30th day. We went from the 4th day to the 30th day. Okay. So, we, we cut to like 26 days later. So, 26 days later. That, that's, that's a long time for Shinji to be in this primordial soup, contemplating things. Awful long time. The LC temperature is stable at 36 degrees. Okay. And they've gotten the helmet back on. No problem with oxygen concentration. They've gotten the engine and stuff back in there. Okay. So the restraints, the restraints are back on the O1 unit. Okay. I, I, the fact that Shinji was around nerve all that time ago, Come on, come on. The pulse's normal wave pattern is B and they've managed to get, they've got the entry plug out. The instrumentation is functioning normally. And Masato just looks so sad. She's like, ugh. Type EP2 salvage procedural work outline and type LP3 complement, compl complementation procedure. Nerve project type three. Top secret, all right? So Masato, Masato, and I'm sorry, this marker is squeaking. Masato is worried for Shinji's salvage. She's worried. It's this top secret plan. Ugh. And so only you have created could have created this in just one month. Yeah, Ritsko, she's pretty smart doing this all in 30 days. I didn't come up with the idea. It's data from experiments 10 years ago. 
Okay, so 10 years ago, Shinji, he's 14 now. Yeah, so 10 years ago. So Akagi had the salvage, had the salvage plans from 10 years ago was the data. Okay. Funny that, because that would have been around the time that Shinji would have been four years old, which would have been around the time of that flashback we just saw with Fuyu and him and Akagi's mom. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, what if, how do we know that Shinji has not been primordial soup before? How do we know they didn't put this baby into an Eva unit, make him primordial soup then, and they scooped him out four years ago? How, ten years ago? How do we know that didn't happen? How do we know that didn't happen with Ray? I, oh. So this, they've done this before. This, this is done before. But they said the kind of thing happened during Eva's development. And she said, it was before I worked here. Okay. It seems my mother was here, but I only know the data. And she's also like typing super fast around this time. For the record, my supervisor at work, she types exactly like that. She's like crazy fast. It, it makes me like sweat how fast she is at typing. How did it come out back then? I heard they failed. The 31st day. So this has been done around four years ago. The time that uh, Shinji was four years old. And the plan originally, originally failed. Okay, so maybe Shinji was not the first time they tried this plan. Maybe they tried it on Rei and it failed with her and they only just now got her back. I don't know. Maybe they tried it on Yui. And maybe Yui was the one that they tried the whole synchronization with the Eva on and it failed with her. And Maybe that Shinji, oh my god, maybe Shinji is looking out on the Eva and seeing his mom in the entry plug, and then she bonds with the Eva, and they can't get her back. And she just bonds with that Eva unit. I... Maybe. Maybe. And Shinji watched it, and then he ran away. I don't know. We've gotten more in this episode than we have in most of the series on, on the stuff with the Evas and Shinji and his involvement with Nerve in the past, but there's still so much left unanswered. And I have a feeling over the next six episodes, we're going to get those answers. It's just a matter of time. So yeah, the plan originally failed. And then we're on to the 31st day. No problems. So yeah, Shinji is still stuck inside the Eva unit. And so then we have him looking up at the sky and saying these words. So there's the sky and the sun. And we have these words, happiness warmth back into our existential state is this the warmth of a human okay is this the warmth of a human and is that really shinji asking that question or is it the eva unit asking that question right i never knew it so there's a line i never knew it Okay, and that, that the sun being blocked by the cloud there kind of reminds me of like the S2 engine inside the Eva is the one thing that the angel has that it that if you break it, it, it kills it. So maybe there's a connection there. And then there's the droplet of water. There's so in this whole scene, there's a drop of water. Drop of water and a ripple. And that frequently happens the rest of this episode. So the drop of water and the ripple. And we see Shinji and Rei, and Rei asks, what is loneliness? What is lone loneliness? So Rei is asking in Shinji's vision here, what is loneliness? And he replies, I didn't understand it before, but I think I do now. I didn't understand it before but I think I do now and it's kind of creepy because we see Ray's eye in that scene we just see the red eye and it's just like ugh, it's unsettling right it just doesn't look right again again the animation direction is a little bit weird this episode because like the foreground where you see Ray in the shadows with the eye we've not seen the animation kind of like that this season so it's interesting 
And then they ask again, what is happiness? And he says, I didn't understand it before, but I think I do now. So these two, these two feelings, what is loneliness? What is happiness? So it's like Shinji over the last month stuck in this Eva unit having a out of body soul search crises has determined what he didn't think he understood happiness or loneliness before, but he thinks he understands it now. Good for him. And so it says, are others kind to you? And I think it's Ray talking to him. Again, Ray's kind of the buffer in all of this. And Ray asks, like, are others kind to you? Okay. And this is a pretty big question for Shinji. And he says, well, yes. Why? So that's, that, yeah, are others kind to you? And the answer is yes. And that spurns or spurs the question of why. Why are they kind to you? And he says, because I'm an Eva pilot. That's, that's the reason why. Because I'm an Eva pilot. And this ties to Ray. It ties to Asuka. He says, I, because I pilot an Eva, they treat me well. And we see that one line, that string line from back in episode 16, right? That's the reason I'm allowed to be here. So being this pilot is his purpose. He can have friends and have a decent life because he's an Eva pilot, right? It's all that sustains me. And he like clenches the fist being like, this is my reason, right? It's, it's that whole, that fist trying to clench earlier was him trying to have like, what is my reason? Why am I here? Am I here to tell my father I hate him? And he's like, no, I'm here to be an Eva pilot. It's the way he says it's all that sustains me. And that's really freaking sad. You know why? Because that's suggesting that in Shinji's mind at this moment, all he sees is that he's an Eva pilot and that's it. He will not have... And we saw in episode 19 that, yeah, they've made it to where him being an Eva pilot is literally his existence. Because if he's not an Eva pilot, like what happened in the last episode then if he's not an Eva pilot, then he won't be able to access any of the friends that he's made. He won't be able to have a shelter. He won't be able to have safety. He'll be on his own. They're like everything that was given to him that he developed will be taken away from him if he doesn't pilot the Eva. And Asuka, Asuka's whole reason for existence has been to pilot the Eva, giving her purpose. Ray, the same thing. So I have to pilot the Eva. And he's back on the train with her. She says, pilot. And enemy. Yes, I have to fight what everyone calls the enemy. That's where it gets kind of disturbing, is that the the Eva unit's like, what what do you do other than pilot? What do you do with other than pilot? And Shinji Shinji says that I pilot and fight in quotations the enemy what everyone calls the enemy, right? He doesn't exactly know what it is. He just knows he has to fight it. And he looks determined, but kind of like, determined, but not sure. And she says, fight and I have to win. And fight and win. There's no other exceptions. I mustn't lose. I have to pilot the Eva as I'm told. And it's just him gripping that over and over again. Like, like just thinking, saying that I have to, I have to pilot and obey. Which is, which is crazy, right? It's like he's back to where he was at the beginning. I have to win as I'm told. Otherwise, nobody, nobody, nobody. Do your best. Yeah, so we get the word nobody. Nobody, do your best. He's like, if I don't pilot and obey and I don't win and I don't do what they tell me to do, then 
I will be a nobody and I will have nobody around me. And that's really freaking sad that Shinji is in this corner and position where he has no choice but to do what others tell him to, to be the hero because otherwise he has nothing. That's really freaking sad. And then to top it all off, they say, do your best. This is the inculcation, right? What are you doing? Do it right. Do your best, man. Do your best. Good work, Shinji. And, and he's holding that green phone, like that phone where he tried to call his father when the angel attack like wiped out all the power when it was the microbial angels. He's holding the phone trying to talk to his father and hearing, and the voices he hears are Masato's, Ritsuko's, Asuka's, Toji's, and Kinsuke's, not Ray's, and Gendo's. He hears everybody but Ray. Everybody but Ray gives him praise and tells him to do his best. So the whole do your best is everyone but Ray. And Gendo says good work. It's like the rosary thing. You just made the rosaries of the do your best, right? Uh-huh. And he sees the images of all of them, like, flash before him. And then he sees... And Gendo is the jagged line, which is interesting. But not race. He says, they all praise me. And he's so happy when he hears it. It goes back to that whole year number one. And he's like... And it's that praise. He gets really happy, right? He's like, they all praise me. He sees Masato happy. When I pilot the Eva, they all praise me. They praise someone like me, and they all tell me to pilot it. Father. The father that abandoned me, I'll show him. He says, I'm doing my best. So he's like, they all praise me for piloting. So he's going to show Gendo he's that he's... That he's doing his best. He's like, I'm doing all I can. I'm doing the best that I can. What more do you want from me? And he laments to Ray saying that somebody be nice to me. I have fought so hard. I'm fighting with everything I've got. Treat me well. That's the saddest thing in the world. He's saying that I'm fighting. I'm fighting with all I've got. So just treat me well. See me. Be kind to me. It's the saddest thing. Shinji's like, I'm doing what you're asking me to. I'm fighting. So can't you be nice to me? Like the fact that Shinji has to ask someone to be nice to him. It's like, are you joking? Oh. He's like, just be nice to me. And then we go back to the ocean. And we hear the voice say, I'm nice to you. And so then, why not? Why not just get naked women? So we have the whole thing of, I'm going to go tie the, the 31st day over here, because this is pretty much the rest of the episode, saying, I am nice to you. Now, is it the Eva talking in this moment? Maybe. I think it's the Eva talking, because the Eva, I think it has the image of the only three women that Shinji is remotely interested in is Masato and Asuka and Rei for different reasons. And then we have Yui there at the end, but Yui is blurry. So I think Yui is inside that Eva somehow. I think it's his mom inside the Eva somehow. I don't know how, but I think she's in there. But then they're like, tell me Shinji, do you want to become one with me? And I think that it's even though it's the this nude representation of Masato, Asuka, and Rei, I don't think that it's... There is a sexual element to it, but I don't think it's really that. I think that it is the idea that... And we go back to what was said in the Fly Me to the Moon in the ED where it was them talking. So tell me, Shinji, do you want to become one with me. And I think that's Eva trying to say, like, do you want to merge with me? Do you want to, like, be absorbed by me and stay here forever? I think that's what it's creepily trying to say. To be of one mind and body. To be of one 
mind, and body. I think that that is the end result of what they want with these Evas. They want a pilot to merge with the Eva and control it from within. And to have this brainwash mentality that they're working for nerve and whatever, whatever Gendo's end result plans are, I think that that's tied to it. He, they want a pilot to merge with the Eva. And right now Shinji's like the best case scenario of that happening. But one of the words that was constantly, and they say it's a very, very comforting feeling, right? It's a very, very comforting feeling feeling. I feel this is very Twin Peaks. This whole thing is very Twin Peaks. If you've ever watched Twin Peaks, I love Twin Peaks. It's one of my favorite shows. Um, but it has this like supernatural element to it that's very surreal and, and kind of like, not impressionistic, but it's very surreal. And there's like this whole scene with Masato and Ray and Asuka naked, like talking to him, basically being the Eva unit, trying to convince Shinji to merge with it. It feels very Twin Peaks. There's just no other way to describe it. If you've watched Twin Peaks, you'll probably understand what I'm saying. And so it's okay, you know, it's okay whenever you are. I'm okay whenever you are. So I want to get this down. It's okay. I'm okay whenever you are. So that could tie the Eva not working or responding to the dummy plug or anything when Shinji wasn't around because he was not okay. And so the Eva unit was not okay. I just feel like there, one of the words that was up here was breasts. And yeah, 14 year old boy, there's a sexual, a sexual quality to it, like sexual awakening, which you could tie to the awakening of the Eva. You could, you could, it's, this is kind of like the most messed up coming of age story anyway. So you could tie that that sexual awakening to breasts being like a word in his form in the foreground of his mind. But I also think it's tied to when we see him like nursing from his mom later. And we'll get to that. I think it's tied to that as well. And like, hey, stupid Shinji, do you want to become one with me? Even in his even in his subconscious, Asuka is such a, a such a brat to him to be of one mind and body. Like it gets repeated three times, right? Three times. Because it's a very, very comforting feeling. Uh, you don't hear me say this every day. Come over here already. So that that ties back. That whole come over here ties to her kissing him, right? Come over here. It ties to their kiss back in a episode, was it 15? Pretty sure. Yep. And then we see Ray. Ikari, do you want to become one with me? To be of one mind and body. It's a very, very comforting feeling. Ikari, do you want to become one with me? Yep. Uh-huh. And they repeat it again. Mm-hmm. And so then he's like, come on, relax and release your soul. Yeah, that's not, that's not, you know, bad at all. You know, yeah, that that's, there's nothing ominous about that. Come on, relax and release your soul. Because I think what's happened is these evil units don't have a soul. They're soulless. And so they're seeking the soul of an Eva pilot to like merge with them, right? And so they're like, oh, just come on, Shinji, just release your soul and merge with us. I'm like, no, please don't. Yep. And so then we get the drop of the water. And meanwhile, everybody's like, oh, all investigative probes inserted. Like we just cut back, cut out of that, right? It's like the fudge. And so they're trying, they're preparing for restart. Um, direct connection 312, fixed it electromagnetic. And so they're like, stats all green. And they're looking at like Destrudo and Libido, which is like the psychic essence threshold signal. Why am I not surprised? The Eagle bo Border Pulse connection is complete. Start the salvage. And so they're transmitting a signal trying to anchor it. No sign of rejection. All right, the, the second and third signals. I like Masato's just sitting there like, come on, Shinji, get out of there. Let's do this. The Distrito cannot be confirmed. Shift the subject to stage two. Masato's like, come on, Shinji. And so then we see him like wake up in the hospital bed, right? So there's the Shinji. We've kept going back to that over and over again. The Shinji hospital bed scene. And so then we get this like possibly seizure inducing Asuka thing where he's like stupid Shinji, Shinji. And it's Asuka, Ritsuko, Toji, Kinsuke, and then Rei being like Kari and Masato 
all saying his name over and over again, trying to like get him back. They're trying to bring him back to reality, right? And I love that the, the writing and stuff is rainbow and it gets just bigger and bigger, right? Kind of like the rainbow when they enter the EVA units too. And then it, there's a normal loop. The ego border is frozen in a loop. Okay. But the border, the border is frozen in a loop. They can't make contact and they can't anchor him down. It's like, damn it. Oh my God. Try firing all range of waveforms in all directions. Just, just, just try everything at this point is what Akagi says. Just try it all, right? So Mel Choir is responsible for this one, which is interesting because, okay, the Balthasar, I thought we, did we say Mel Choir was either the mom or the woman was one of them, right? So we have all these active links, all these sub links. Oh my God. in the signal. And it just keeps going. It's not working. The signals are being trapped in Klein space, whatever Klein space re means. And Masato's like, what does that mean? I love that Masato is all of us like speak in English. <laughs> speak it in a language we can understand. It means we failed. And Masato's like, ugh. Masato's like, wait, abort, abort intervention, reverse tangent plug. And it says full nerve cut tangent graph reverse. Return the additive value to zero. And the pattern is sepia. There's a change in the pulse score. Plus 0.3 confirmed. I love that we get that number three again. And they're just speaking in jargon at this point. Maintain the status quo and prevent backflow. And they can't stop it. Like, why? So everything, the pilot, what is this? And it's connection 315. So we've had, we've had on our connections up here just for, just for reference. We've had 316. 312 and 315. If anybody wants to investigate what those numbers could mean, I was going to guess John 316, but could be connected to the other verses too. And then, then she asks, don't you want to come back, Shinji? Yeah, Akagi. Like it's resisting and Akagi says, don't you want to come back? Shinji may want to come back, but the Eva may not want him to come back. So, okay. And then he's there. He's like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh, and he, it's like, it's like his spirit is like trying to form again, but he's like, I don't get it. He's like, I don't understand what's going on. And then he says, what do you wish? And they say it three times. And then we see Yui. We finally see Yui. And then there's the question of what do you wish that all three of them, along with Yui, ask him? Yep. And it says refused. The Eva has rejected the signal. The formation of the LCL is breaking down. Reverse the pressure, the pressure in the plug. And so they're like, and of course, surprising no one, they try to drop the power and Maya's like, we can't do it. Maya's whole job in this series is to tell you that the thing you want to go is not going to go. And the thing you want to work is not going to work. That is Maya's whole job. I'm like, she might as well just, did you expect anything to go on while Maya was sitting there? Not that it's Maya's fault, but I'm like, every time Ask, every time Akagi's like, Maya, check the plug. She's like, it's not working. It never works. The plug is venting. And then it all just releases. Oh. And they're like, huh. And there goes the primordial soup. And she says his name and he like wakes up in the hospital. He's like, where am I? Inside the, and he's still inside the Eva. So that whole thing of what do you wish? He was still in the Eva, even after the soup left. So did he want to leave or not? That That's the question. It's like, I don't think the Eva doesn't want him to leave. The Eva wants him to stay there and become one with it. It wants to absorb him and, and combine with him. That's what the Eva wants to do. But Shinji just doesn't understand. And he can't make a decision. 
So this version of himself, which is odd, the, the version of himself that's looking through the fishbowl is like a combination of Ray and himself. Like it has the striped shirt like he did before, but it has Ray's kind of hair, but we can't see its face to tell which one it is. Oh, it's back to being the boy. It's the little boy again. He's like, I'm inside the Eva. Did I pilot the Eva again? Why? And then he cuts, it cuts to Masato, but everything's like distorted and in shadows and looks like a film negative. And he's like, I decided I'd never pilot the Eva again. And we get the whole, the thing of where it says God's in his heaven and it's all just distorted. But you did pilot the Evo unit one. And he's like, oh, I did. And it's like, it's Masato's voice bringing him back. You are here now because you piloted the Eva. You did do it. And he sits there and we see you're the person you are now because you piloted the Eva. So it's Masato. Masato telling Shinji that you are who you are and where you are because you piloted the Eva. She's like, you can't change that from happening. I love that it's Masato's voice that tells him this. Masao's like, you can't deny it. The fact that you piloted the Eva. You can't deny the self that you have been so far, which is your past. So Masato's like, you can't, you can't run from the past. I feel like Masato just needs to become Rafiki from The Lion King. She needs a stick with a, with a gourd on it and just to bat Shinji over the head and be like, you can't change the past. You can only run from it or learn from it. That, that's the whole thing. I love that it's Masato's voice, like his mentor figure saying, Shinji, you can either run from the past, you, you know, you, the past can't hurt. You can either run from it or learn from it. Like at this point, that's where you're at. Like you can't ignore it. And I love that it's Masato telling him this and he doesn't respond to her. He just listens. She's like, but as for what you will do from now on, that choice is up to you. You have to decide for yourself. And we see that Shinji decided back in the last episode what he was going to do. So, yeah, you can't run from the past. You decide the future. That's the thing. Masato, I love that it's Masato that's telling him, your past will not go away, but you pick how the future is going to go. And he says, I, I, and it's again repeating. He says, I don't understand, but he says, I, I, and then he says, I, I again. And it shows him. And just when you think like he's made the resolution and the decision, Masato's like crying over his empty suit. It's the saddest freaking thing. I hate it. In front of that Eva core thing. And she says, if it can't, if it can't even save one life, what good is science? Oh, Masato, my girl. She just, she's heartbroken because she thinks she's lost Shinji. Ugh. Did not need to see that. Still gonna take a picture of it. <laughs> she says, give Shinji back, give him back. Oh, Masato! Oh, my girl. I feel for her in this. And the bird's flying away. And he's back in that hospital room. Uh-huh. And he's seeing her, like, calling out to him. And, okay, so this hospital room has been there the whole series, and he constantly goes back to it. So the question is, well, and Ray's been there with him. So, again, this is kind of like a Twin Peaks moment. Has he ever really been in a hospital room? Or since him and Ray are connected, like, subconsciously, it seems... Has he, but Asuka was outside the hotel, the hospital room that one time too, and she's not connected. So, but, but the, the show makes you wonder whether Shinji's actually been in a hospital room this whole time, or if the entire time it's all been in his head and this has been what he's been thinking of, but he's not actually been there. Like the show makes you question it. Like, okay, what has been reality and what has not been reality this whole time? I feel like if I go back and watch this series again, I'm going to be like, Oh, and I still have six more episodes to go and four movies. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then he talks about this smell, right? He talks about this smell. And in the past with episodes, smell has constantly gone. It's been talking about blood. That's what it's been going back to. He's like a smell, a person smell. And he says, is it, is it Masato? 
And he says, Ayanami. And then it's like, no, not them. And like, it just gets freaky and like gets all blurry. He says, it's not them. And it's like, oh, uh, all the like frazzle. He says, that's right. This is the smell of my mother. Yeah, his mom's in that Eva unit. You can't tell me otherwise. And the smell is of his mother. Mm -hmm. She's in there somehow. Damn it, Gendo, tell me things. And then we cut to him like nursing from her. And we hear Gendo. This is what I wanted to get back to. So there's a thing, there's a thing with the breasts, right? And yes, the breasts in his mind, it could be referring to like a sexual awakening of a teenage boy, or it could be referring to like his mother, his mother nursing and taking care of him. That basic need that he has wanted this whole series of someone just to unconditionally love him and to give to him. And we cut to this moment where he's doing that with his mom and it's like, okay, that's what he's just wanted what he had at birth only in the form of like human interaction that he's been denied with the exception of the last few months he's been with these with Asuka and Ray and Toji and the others. And he started to like and Masato and redevelop that. Right. But then Gendo says, so he will live in this world in the hell after the second impact. So Gendo Gendo is questioning, is questioning life post second impact for his child, which is something that we've not really seen out of Gendo this whole series is him questioning being like, so my kid's gonna have to live in this hell hole now that the second impact has happened. And the mom says, oh, but if you have the will to live, Anywhere can be heaven. So we see his mom, Yui says, Yui is way more optimistic than Gendo. Yui says that if you have the will to live, anywhere can be heaven. Like, yeah, the, the world may be a mess, but if you want to live then you can make anything, anything can be great. You know, it doesn't have to, the world may be in shambles, but as long as you have the will to live, you'll be fine because he is alive. Oh my God. Just give me a second. Because he is alive. Because he was born into this world. <laughs> oh my God. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Because he was born into this world. He has freedom. He can do whatever he wants. He has the world at his fingertips because he was born into this world. He'll have plenty of chances to find happiness. And he says, I see that's very true. Plenty of chances, chances, chances to find happiness. God, again, again, I, uh, you could compare this to, uh, Obligatory Attack on Titan spoiler. So this whole thing, again, the whole, because he was born into this world, is a reference to what Aaron's mother said about him, that he was special because he was born into this world. That's basically what Yui is saying about Shinji. But this idea that he has many chances to find happiness, I feel like I should have watched this episode before recording the recap for season four, part two of Attack on Titan. Because, yeah, the, the, one of the big challenges with Aaron's character, and Shinji's character too in this, is that even though the world is, is, you know, awful, there's chances at little bits of happiness. As long as you're alive, you can make the world great. You can find these small happinesses. And characters like Armin in the series have done that, and that's what they stand behind. But Aaron can't see that. He's so bound to these other things. And there's tons of other factors that go watch my six and a half hour recap of that season, and I'll talk about it. But it's so crazy to see it just blatantly called out here that, yeah, you'll have chances to find happiness even if the world's a bad place. And Gendo's like, oh, I see, that's very true. But for Shinji, it seems like he's not getting those chances because the world isn't letting him have that opportunity. It's, it's kind of ending up like a very Aaron-like situation. So, again, end of those spoilers. But, oh, my God, the parallels. It's crazy. And he says, mother. And he keeps seeing these droplets and then there's this little thing in the ocean. So there's this little drop in the ocean. 
So again, and it's like a little swimming, swimming there. So we don't know if that's like him as an embryo, him as a baby. And so it, it seems like Gendo had the choice to name them. So Gendo said that if it was a boy, Shinji, and if it was a girl, Ray. So they ended up with both because we have a Ray. So the question is, did Shin, did Gendo name Ray? Did Gendo give Ray and Ayanami her name, or is Yui's maiden name Ayanami? Hmm. Maybe Yui's maiden name is Ayanami, and so he ended up with two children, Ray and Shinji. Is Ray a clone? It was Ray like an embryo that he like artificially inseminated and made Ray. I am wrong. We're getting quite, we're getting answers slowly. And then we have the top. Is it like supposed to be like a test tube? And we're seeing like the little floaty, you know, zygote there at the top there. Is that it? Shinji and Ray. Mm hmm. Yep. And then we see mother. So, okay. So we see, we see him like floating as a child, much like the creepy Ray was in the, in the past. So, were him and Ray, were they just test tube babies? Were they just like, they were just little embryos that were made in a lab? Are him and Ray just like, were they artificially created in a lab from Gendo and Yui's DNA? We're slowly getting answers, but there's still more questions. And we see the light that we've seen from the OP right there. Oh my gosh. And then it turns red, which is the color that Ray hates. And it goes back and forth from red to blue, right? Ah, and it has that little, that, that crescendo, that little ripple. But it's red this time. And then Ray, and then Masato, here's a splash. And then it just like, from inside the S2, from in, it just popped out Shinji. <laughs> oh my god. So Shinji associates Masato as a maternal figure to him. I don't think that Shinji views Masato as a mother, but she is someone with a maternal aura to her because she looks, she cares for Shinji like a mother would, right? At the end of the day here, at the end of the day here, Masato cares for Shinji like a mom would, and that's what he wants. That's what he wishes for. He wishes for that caring. He wants that compassion, that love. And Masato gives it in this moment. And he can feel it and sense it. And that's why he goes back. Or at least that's what I think. Who knows? <laughs> but, oh my God. But he's back. And so then we cut to, of course, the 33rd day. Because Anno, at this point, realizes that we've been counting how many threes are in these episodes. And he's like, I'll just put in two more just for kicks and giggles. And I'm like, I hate you. So the 33rd day, we have Akagi driving with the GPS. Okay, so there's not enough room. There's not enough room. Okay, so this whole conversation on the radio versus what was happening um, the radio conversation versus what was happening in the car. I wanted to write that down. So we're going to come up here and do that. All right. We're going to come up here and talk about this jazz. I'm still, I'm, I don't know what to think of Ray and Shinji. Are they, are they twins? Are they both clones? Are they just kids made in a test tube? Was Shinji his son? And then he made Ray after he lost his wife. Is Ray a clone of his wife? I know we're going to find out, but it's, it's still fascinating. My mind is like baffled with all these questions. So we have this conversation on the radio, right? As they're driving. And it says, sure, I can understand, but I guess that's what's called the oral stage. Okay. So we have oral stage is brought up on the radio. And says here, and meanwhile, they're talking about the restoration of unit one will be complete the day after tomorrow. So we got that going on over here. And so we have unit one restoration in two days. That didn't take long. So we got that. And we see that they're driving along and they got a destination point. It's something a psychologist came up with a long time ago. So it's something to do with psychology. 
surprising no one. All right, and so let's see what goes on here. Okay, in the end, humans will even use God's powers as a tool. Oh, the oral stage. It's where you want to be with your mother forever. Oh, okay. So it's where you want to be with your mother forever. That's the, that's creepy because if his mom's in the Eva unit and it's like wants to be with him. Okay. Well, that, that gives a whole new creepy feel to the whole oral sage. So meanwhile, and Akagi, while this is going on, Akagi says humans will use, or maybe it's Masato saying it, humans will use God's power as a tool. Not creepy at all either. Okay. It refers, and then meanwhile, the radio says it refers to people who always want to be dependent on someone. So they want to be dependent. They don't want to break away. They want somebody to be dependent upon. Okay, which fits fits Shinji pretty well in this episode. Okay. And so it says, there's someone like that among my acquaintances too, and you're a lot like him. And so Kagi says, I don't know about that. I hear some on the committee have even suggested a freeze. So the committee, the committee is talking about freezing operations. Okay. And meanwhile, there's someone among my acquaintances and you're a lot like him. Okay. As far as I can see from your letter, from your girlfriend's standpoint. So this is tied to like a girlfriend and a letter on the radio. Okay. And then from there we get the artificial human evangelion. So artificial human Eva. All right. Being your lover, your mother, or what else? Your kid's sister. So, okay. So it said from the girlfriend's letter, it said, is this person a mother, a lover, or your kid sister. That is describing the three women from this episode. Masato's like the mother, Asuka's like the lover, and Rey is like the kid sister. The fudge. Mm -hmm. Or you could flop them around. Or you could flip them around. It could be, it could be that Rey's like the mother, and Asuka's like the lover, and Masato's like the sister. Or maybe Masato's like the lover and Asuka's like the kid sister. You could flip them all around, but it's referring to those three women from this episode. Oh. And then as they're talking, they're saying, for it being man-made, don't you think the black box of unknowns is too large? Yes. So Masato's bringing up that it, even though the Evas are man-made, there are too many unknowns. Masato's like, you all don't even know what you're dealing with. You may have made this monstrosity, but you have no clue how it functions and you can't control it. So isn't that a problem? And then meanwhile, the radio says, I think being all those things for you is pretty rough. So it's, I, it's saying that there is one person, one person embodying all of these things, which you know, it could be talking about how it could talk, that could refer to like Masato, Asuka, and Rei all have each of these parts in them, the mother, the lover, and the kid sister. It could talk about, you think of the Magi, the three computers. You have the three computers that are the mother, the woman, and the scientist. You have that. You have the fact that, well, I was thinking of the, the three computers being the mother, the scientist, but them all embodying one person was pretty hard. Mm-hmm. And so from there, the radio says, as you know, aren't you sort of taking advantage of her place as a lover? Using it as your personal outlet for your libido. Oh, so it's saying that the, the writer of the letter is just using the woman for sex. 
is that going to be talking about, is that going to be referring to Kaji and Masato later on, maybe? And that whole scenario with them? I don't know. Meanwhile, this these two conversations happening side by side are insane. So meanwhile, Masato's like, I don't care about the unknowns and what all your committee is doing and all this shady business that y'all are up to. I just care that Shinji was saved. Masato only cares that Shinji was saved. It's all she cares about. That's it. And so then they the radio says, well, that may have been a little bit extreme. Okay. And then Akagi's like, that wasn't me. It was probably you. Mm. And then the radio says, but a woman is very sensitive to whether someone loves her or not. Okay. So the radio says that women are sensitive to being loved or not. That they want to be loved just as much, right? Hmm. And then the radio says, so I think she's probably twigged onto that by now, meaning she's probably figured it out, that you're looking for a mother, that you're looking for a mother you can sleep with in her. Oh, 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 that you're looking for a mother you can sleep with in her. Oh, so they're looking, so it's, that's the oral stage. It's the idea that, that when you're dating, that this person, it's a psychological condition where this person is dating someone and yeah, they're wanting sex, but they're also wanting that person, they want that person to be a lover, but they also want them to be a mother to them as well. Oh, interesting. Okay. I mean, I guess I could apply to Shinji. And then I don't think that Shinji was sexually attracted to Masato. He seemed pretty kind of disgusted with her for the most part, but it could apply to Ray. Could apply to Asuka. Especially if you go back to Asuka saying the words mother when her and Shinji were like really close to being intimate. Hmm. So meanwhile, while all this jazz is explaining the title of the episode, um, Asuka says, do you want to go out for a drink for once? So Asuka, so, um, not Asuka, Akagi. Akagi asks Masato out for drinks. They're just talking about the possible, you know, something that could possibly cause mass havoc on the world and they just barely made it out of world destruction. But you want to go get a beverage? You want to go share a beer now that we've gotten through all that? Amazing. And if she hasn't brought up splitting up with you, that's what the radio says. So the radio says if the idea of splitting up comes up. And so Masato says, as they're talking about splitting up, Masato says, nah, I gotta go. I have somewhere to go. Masato's like, I gotta go elsewhere. Hmm. She might be one of those nice girls that are pretty rare, you know? So if they haven't split up with you, she might be a nice girl that is rare. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if that's referring to Masato with Kaji. And Akagi's like, I see. And then we see the green light go to, the red light go to green. I thought this, I'm going to take a shot of it. This, again, with Akagi blurry in the forefront and the car in the focus, that's happened a lot in this episode, That where the stuff in the forefront has been blurry and the stuff behind has been the what you focus on and it's a very unusual it looks kind of disturbing it's a little unusual the way that it's composed but it's interesting and then akagi she looks kind of skinny there going on a tryst with a man the moment she knows shinji is safe so akagi judges her a little bit saying that that you you let off let off steam once you know Shinji is safe. I mean, yes. And she seems a little judgmental there. Like, oh, now that your friend is safe, like the moment you find out he's safe, you go to have a tryst. She's like, I guess I'm in no position to talk. Hmm. I wonder what that means. She's like, oh, I guess, you know, you go do this one thing the moment things are safe. I guess I can't say anything. So what does that mean? Akagi? 
What does that mean? If Akagi if is having a affair with Gendo, I will throw up my lunch. I will throw up my lunch if she's having an affair with Gendo. I knew. Nope. Not gonna have it. I will throw hands. That better not happen. No, gross. I'll accept her and Fuyu-chan more than her and Gendo. I was like, if Akagi was having like an affair with Gendo, with Fuyu-chan, I'd be like, get it, girl. He's cute. <laughs> he's old, but he's cute. But, um, Gendo, God, no. Better not. Better not be. Huh. And then we cut to the sex scene of them. And it's honestly the classiest lovemaking scene in possibly any media that I've watched. I'm just floored that an anime for teenagers got away with this. I'm floored that they got away with this. To be honest, that it wasn't censored. I, I as a kid, I'd like to think if I was in my preteens, I would know what was going on. I mean, you know, you, you, it's very classily done. I love the, the image of them holding hands, like her hand and his, like, I, I love the way that this whole scene's composed. And Masao saying, Ritsuko must think I'm pretty disgusting right about now. Like, she knew what, she knew that she was, she knew exactly that Akagi knew where she was going. Like, that was very clear, right? And Kaji says, indulging our carnal desires is more realistic as humans. Hmm. I feel like that's a weird translation. I, I I'm like, the way that it's worded there is suggesting they're not human. And I'm like, but they are, right? <laughs> have, have they been aliens this whole time? But no, I feel like Kaji's just like, no. He's like, what's wrong with us having sex? He's like, we're just humans. It's what people do. It's, you know, we're we're all animals. It's what they do. Why should we deny ourselves? Smooth, Kaji. <laughs> but her saying we can fool them a little. Our int so he's like, we can fool them a little. So that that's the thing. So they're actually, the whole point of that piece of dialogue that Kaji says, and I'm going to move this over here again, out of space, is that the whole, the sex scene is to cover them swapping intel. That's the whole idea is that they met up to talk about nerve and talk about stuff going on and the sex, the sex is just a bonus. It's just a cherry on top of the cake, right? It's just cherry on top. Like, well, while we're here, we both are attracted to each other. While we're here swapping intel, why not? And so they say our intelligence department, our Commander Ikari or Commander Ikari and Ritsko or me. Hmm. So there's, there's two, those three things brought up. The Intel department, Gendo and Akagi, who I pray to God are not a thing, or Masato. Hmm. And I like that they focus on the lamp above. This show is focused on like the light, above, the light fixture above the roof. Again, this is not really an Attack on Titan spoiler, but if you ever watch the show, one symbolic element that is present throughout the show is lanterns. Lanterns, and they're usually a sign of a symbolic representation of knowledge. And in this show, um, a lot of times we see the, the lights on top of the ceiling. So that's a thing. And so that's interesting. He says, no, myself. Hmm. So I want to go back to that that to that sentence there, in in there. Oh, it's like who are we fooling? She says we can fool them a little. Are we fooling the intelligence department? Are we fooling Gendo and Akagi? Are you fooling me? And he says no, myself. And oh, she's got her head on his chest. Look at that. You mean others, don't you? Hmm. So it's like this whole sex thing is like, is he just fooling himself thinking that this can be a thing with, with him and Masato for real? Hmm. And she's like, you mean you're fooling others, not yourself, huh? Hmm. You don't have any interest in others, but you want their attention anyway. Hmm. And that goes back to him flirting with all those other people. He's like, you don't have any interest in them, but you just want their attention regardless. Like you're just a flirt, right? Hmm. 
And I love that it cuts back that you really are just like my father. So, Island, she like squeezes his hand then. So, her saying that, I'm going to have to come out here, that you have no interest but want their attention. And that's exactly how her father was. Mm. And again, we cut to, we cut to, oh my God, I just realized what that was. Okay. Man, if you were a kid watching this show, you probably would know the cigarettes in the ashtray and the cigarettes have her lipstick stain on them. You'd probably recognize that in the lighter. You'd probably recognize the beer in the glass there on the shelf. I don't know if small summer child, innocent preteen me would know the condom wrapper in the corner. <laughs> Cause that's what it is. I was watching. I was watching the episode, being like, "Is that a strip of bacon?" <laughs> I was watching the reaction, being like, "What the hell is that?" And I couldn't focus on it because I was listening to their conversation. I couldn't focus on it. It's a damn condom wrapper. It's been ripped open. So Kaji, remember, kids, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go have sex in a hotel, then make sure that you use protection. I can't believe they got away with this in a kid's show. He's like, I didn't know you still smoked. I only smoke after this sort of thing. Uh-huh. So nobody knows but you. That's so, oh, Masato girl. What a line. She's like, I only smoke after sex. So only you know. I'm like, oh! And he does make a, he did make a, rea he did make a, a verbal reaction to that line in the reaction. I was like, oh yeah, Kaji, you have every right to have that reaction. He's like, well, I'm honored. Like, mm-hmm. And so then, of course, because we're still trying to get information, she's like, how far has the Human Instrumentality Project gotten? And he's like, at, she says, Adam, the destroyer of humanity. So she's referring to Adam, the first angel. Okay. Referring back to it. And why is it being kept underground? And he's like, are you seeing me because you want to know that? He's like, do we have all this happen just for, to find that out? And she's like, well, that's one of the reasons, to be honest. And he's like, I'm most honored to be used by a lady. Mm-hmm. But I can't tell you in a place like this. Oh, my God. And he's like, all I care about right now is for you to understand what I want. Oh, my God. Like, this dialogue. Mm-hmm. What is Nerve and Commander Ikari's true objective? And he's like, I'd like to know that myself. So he's like, we could talk more about Adam, but not in this hotel. No, no. And she's like, well, then what's Commander Ikari and Fuyu Chan's goal? And he's like, I'd like to know that too. He's like, I don't know what their true objective is. And so then she says this line. They like, she's like, don't dodge my questions by doing that. It's like, and you, again, you can't see what's happening. You see in the mirror, there's a window there, right? But you can't see what's happening. The angle of it doesn't let you see what's happening in the mirror. And so, um, I am going to go ahead and take a picture of that to show in the discord just of that nightstand. But, um, in any case, so then we get this nice prolonged scene where they, they literally, I was, again, I'm amazed that it got past the censors that we got literally, we can hear a sex scene be between them. It's a, it's a, it's a teenage show. We cannot show them having sex, but you can listen to it. So I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I, who, who knew? What anime in 2022 would have a scene like this? Not any that I know of. Not any that would do it this way. No. I, maybe I've not watched enough anime. But I can't think of any that would get away with it like this. And so, God, this goes on for quite a bit until she says something. I wanted to get to the end here. She's like, hey, no. Don't put strange things in here and there. So, so what is the strange thing, right? And then he says, what are you doing at a time like this? What's that? And there was a pill there. A present for you. The first in eight years. Though it may be the last. She's like, what are you doing at a time like this? What is that? And so then she puts the 
And he says a present for you, the first in eight years. So in eight years since they've known each other, since they last hooked up, what was the pill there? That's the question. Like, what was that pill? Hmm. Like, is it a message in a pill? But what, what was it though? That part, that part is the one confusing part. And I don't, if it's going to come up again, I don't know if I exactly want to know. But she talked about him not putting something there. Which I think is not referring to what you think is referring to. But she has a pill in her hand. And so I wonder if he was trying to be like, to give her a message. She's like, don't put strange things in there. And so I think he was trying to like, give her something. What is it? I, it looks like a pill. It's a capsule that you can break apart. So I feel like it has some information to give her. He's probably wondering if if it's wiretapped, if the room they're in is wiretapped, or if people are tapping them and trying to hear them out. And so he's trying to keep any information from being leaked, but he gives her the pill that has that's the capsule. So maybe it has some information in it. It's white and red, which reminds me of Adam, right? It says a present for you. The first in eight years, though it may be the last. Hmm. I've I've talked for a long time. <laughs> a very long time about this. About this episode. Ooh. This wasn't my favorite episode, for the record. Um, this wasn't my favorite episode, but it's still really good. And obviously, I wrote on two sides of Whiteboard Coon. There was a lot to talk about, but I feel like it's all... This is ending. This is ending stage two, and we're setting up for act three. And I'm very curious to know what the heck Kaji was talking about with the present at the end. I think there's some message in the capsule, but I'm not sure. I'm guessing we're going to find out, but hmm, we'll have to wait and see, right? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, in the meantime, um, I, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction and discussion. Um, if you have any comments down below, please no spoilers, hints, or clues, but I'm curious to know your thoughts. Um, but yeah, next week is episode of 21, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'm going to let my brain rest and um, process all of this business, and then we'll come back, and I'll probably rewatch the episode, and then we'll come back and see episode 22, or episode 21. <laughs> I'm going to process episode 20, watch it again, and then we'll come back and talk about it next week with episode 21. Bye.